Hello friends. Today we are going to build an other React frontend project using Next.js 13. Next.js offers numerous benefits such as server side rendering, search engine optimization, speed optimization and much more. Let's explore what we will be learning throughout this project. You will learn the best React practices like folder structure, hooks, components and rendering. The design is made by pure CSS, so it will enhance your styling skills. For animations, we will use the Framer Motion library. With Framer Motion, you can learn to create stunning animations. For the carousel functionality, we have used the React Slick carousel. You will also see how to make your web design adaptive and responsive across various screen sizes. Towards the end, we will deploy our project live. So it will enable you to share it with your potential clients or feature it on your portfolio. Overall, this project provides an excellent opportunity to polish your React skills. Enough talking. Let's dive into the introduction and start coding. But before we get into the intro, if you are as excited as I am, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Let's get started. Here I am in a blank VS Code directory. Now let's see what are the requirements to follow this tutorial. I am opening my browser and here the first requirement is you should have a stable version of Node.js installed on your machine. So you can do this by simply writing download Node.js, hit the enter button and on the very first link you can download the Windows version if you are on the Mac OS then click here and similarly if you are on the Linux then you can download this file. It's very simple as I am on the Windows I am just clicking on this and download will start. Yeah it is asking for the location and here it is start. I am cancelling this because I have already installed. Now the next thing is you should have the git installed on your machine. You can do this also by simply writing git download and then on the very first link here you can see click here and you can download your relative version if you are on windows then click here similarly for the mac os and then the linux. Okay now let's go to our vs code and normally we start our next js project by opening the terminal. You can open the terminal by pressing Ctrl plus J and here we write this specific command of npx create next app at the rate latest. But this comes with a lot of boilerplate code which we eventually have to remove. So to avoid this unnecessary work I have made a starter pack for this tutorial. Here in the browser if I go to my github you can see this link of github.com zenrk digital business starter pack. You just have to copy this URL. I will provide this URL in the video description as well. Now in the terminal, I am writing git clone. Just paste the URL and then full stop forward slash. The full stop forward slash will clone this directory in the current folder instead of making a new one. So hit the enter button. So here it is cloned successfully. If I close the terminal by again pressing Ctrl plus J, here you can see it has the default app router which is the recommended way of routing in the next JS. Then we have a public folder. Inside the public folder, I have different folders like the features section, hero section and many more. This folder contains the relative images for each section. So it will save a lot of time for us while developing this project. So we don't have to search for the images on the internet or anywhere else. This starter pack has all the things for following this tutorial. Okay. okay. So to start this project again open your terminal and here write npm install. It will install all the required dependencies for this project. Okay. For the time it is installing let's visit our starter pack. So here I have package.json. In the package.json it's a very simple setup. Here I have listed all the required dependencies like the react icons, react scroll, react click and the framer motion. Okay. Now let's go to our src folder and inside the src folder I have a folder with the name of utils and here I have data.js. 
again data.js is just containing all the relative text so that we can save time while developing this project so i will explain each of this array that is mentioned here at the specific points during the tutorial so let's close this for now and go to our app router and here in the app router the first thing we have is the layout.js so in the layout.js i have simply specified my metadata like the title of the website would be zen keeps code and description would be this which is the default description and then in the root layout we have just rendering our home page with this children prop and here i have imported the global.css if i go to globals.css here these are just the simple color variables and then the html setup this is the html tag box size border box so that when we gonna give some paddings and margins it will not affect our layout okay and then these are some basic properties for the body element like i have specified the text color the margin zero and all these things are very simple okay then we have our page.js so in the page.js it's basically our home page where we're gonna build our complete website so it is containing simple text subscribe to zen keeps code and this is our page.css which is empty for now okay now let's try to start this project i hope our dependencies are installed now yes these are installed so here write npm run dev and it will start our development server on the port 3000 so now let's go to our browser and here i will write localhost 3000 hit the enter button and here we are a very simple text saying subscribe to zen keeps code nothing fancy nothing much pre-built we still have to make all the things from scratch okay now go to our vs code and try from the very first step the first step that we have to do is to include our required font for this tutorial so we're gonna use a specific font from the google fonts let's go to our layout.js here we will be importing our required fonts okay so the normal way of importing the fonts is we will go to our browser and here we normally search for the google fonts and then on the google fonts website we search for the relative fonts like for this tutorial we require josephine sans so josephine sans and yeah here they are then we normally click on this and then select all the required versions and then we copy this link but in the next js this is not the recommended way of importing your fonts so how to import the fonts in the next js open your vs code and here we have all the google fonts pre-built with our next js so all you have to do you just have to import the fonts like josephine sans and then write from next fonts google okay so it will import this font from the next google fonts okay now we have to specify the variants for this font here i would say const joseph is equal to josephine sans and here first of all the subsets are gonna be latin and then we have to specify the weights what weights we will be using in this tutorial so we will use 100 200 and similarly the 300 and actually i will include up to the 700 yeah like this now the next property we have to specify the display as swap okay now to make this font enabled in our browser what we have to do in our body i will give a specific class name for this font here in the front of class name instead of string now i would say joseph dot class name this is the whole setup for including a font in the recommended way in the next 13. let's save this and see in the browser if i go here here you can see the specific font style is now applied if i remove this class name let's say i go to vs code and remove this class name save this and see the font is removed okay so this is as simple in the next 13 and it provides a lot of benefits like you don't have to call for an external cdn for fetching the fonts which can make your website slow 
it's all here and all things are rendered on the server side so they are blazingly fast in compared to a uh, normal method of doing this so it is done now let's go to our page.js here and instead of this pretext here i will make a new div and for this div i will give a class name of app okay now let's import the relative css for page.js here you can see in the same folder we have page.css which is for now empty here i am including this and then we will make all the components of our website within this app div now let's go to our src folder if i close all of my directory and here inside the src i'm going to make a new folder with the name of components inside the components i'm again making a new folder with the name of navbar which should be the start of our website and inside the navbar let's make the two files the navbar.jsx and the navbar.css okay now let's open both of them side by side and let's start from the navbar.jsx here write rafce and vs code will give you the shortcut for making the react fat arrow function like this one and then import the css file for this one navbar.css from the same folder by the way you can also enable these shortcuts by installing an extension i think the extension name is eslint uh yeah this is the eslint and also you should be installing es6 yeah this one javascript es6 code snippets so i am using these extensions and they are working pretty well and i actually like them so now inside the page.js let's import our navbar component so here write navbar here you can see the vs code is giving me a suggestion to import it automatically instead of writing manually the import statement so i am just accepting this suggestion and here it is imported on the top of my file okay let's close this component save this and see in the browser if we have the navbar or not yes here we have the navbar let's go to our vs code again and here go to page.js here we have specified the app class name for our page so to specify some styling for this open our page.css and here i would target the app class for this i am specifically saying the position should be relative for this one and then the transition so for the transition i would say on all type of transition it should have 300 ms of duration and then a type of ease out so that all kind of css changes would become so smooth when we are changing the property of styling programmatically so let's save this and close this now go to our navbar.jsx and here instead of this pretext here i am going to specify div dot and wrapper here n stands for the navbar and then div dot container and then the div dot and container here and again stands for the navbar container i am prefixing the wrappers and the containers with the short form of the component so that our class name should not got mixed okay now you must be wondering why i have followed so much class names before writing anything so first let's write something inside this actually when we are on the very wide screens then this container class would limitize the width of section so that there should not be expanded too much on the wide screens and they should also contain and they should also maintain their shapes on the small screens as well so how we can do this okay here i'm going to open my global.css so here i am opening global.css and at the very bottom of this here i'm going to specify our container class okay first of all normally it should have a width of 100% the margin should be auto so that this section should be in the center of each wrapper and then the last one is overflow should be hidden so that nothing should be going out of this container okay now for the testing i'm going to give it a background color of red let's save this and see in the browser here you can see we have a red color behind our navbar actually right now i am also on a very wide monitor so you can see my zoom level is almost 500% if i go to 100% uh 
you can see my nav bar is containing the width 100%. That should not be the case. It should be in the center of screen. So to do this, again, I am going to my VS code. And here I am writing our first media query. And I would say the minimum width of 2100 pixels. Okay. So on the screen of 2100 pixel, the container class should have the maximum width of 1600 pixels. What it will do? I am saying when the screen size reaches 2100 pixels, then container should not have the width more than 1600 pixels. Let's save this, go to our browser and if I go to my normal mode of 100% and actually below the 100% around 90% to meet the requirement of 2100 pixels, here you can see our navbar is having a width of 1600 pixels, which is in the center of screen. Similarly, I'm going to specify some more media queries. So let me just copy and paste it. So here I am pasting these queries. You can also paste them from the video. So I have specified a minimum width of 576 pixel. The width of container should be 540 on that screen. Similarly, 768 and some more screen sizes. You can just copy and paste from this video. If I save this and see our browser and go to 100%, so here you can see now even on the 100% I'm ha having the navbar in the center of the screen. If I visit our deployed website in a new tab, so let's paste the link. Here you can see the navbar is not having the width of 100% on my monitor because it's a wide monitor. But if I'm on a short monitor, like if I zoom to 125% or 150%, now the navbar is in the center according to that screen but on the large monitors it is containing its shape so similar type of thing we have did here but with the help of container class that's why i am saying the container class is gonna be common in all of our components now let's start the content of our navbar i am dividing our navbar in the two sections the first section is gonna be left side of our navbar so for this one i would say it as div with the class name of navbar logo and then the second side is the right side and for this one i am simply saying div and right which is the right side of our navbar here i am saying right and inside our nav logo i can simply make a span inside the span let's say zen keeps code okay let's save this and see in the browser Yep, here I have Zen keeps code and the right side. It's time to give it some styling. So here I'm opening my navbar.css and first of all target our n wrapper, which is this one, the most parent class. For this one, I'm giving it a background color of our variable, which is primary color. You can see in the globals.css, here I have a primary color with this some kind of purple shade. So I am using this variable inside our navbar.css like this and here giving it a width of 100%. By the way, I should remove our red color from the container. This one, I should be removing this. And here I am giving it a position of absolute with the Z index of 999 so that our navbar should be on the top of everything on our website. Okay, let's save this and then after this, I am having the navbar container. So for the navbar container, I am specifying the padding of 1.5 rem from the top and bottom and 1 rem from the left and right side. Then giving it a font color of simply white with the font size of 1 rem and a display flex. So that making the display flex, we can position our items at the end of our navbar because we have the left side that should be on the most left of our navbar container and then we have the right side that should be towards the extreme right side of our navbar container okay so display flex with the align item center and justify content space between actually this is the property space between which makes our items towards the extreme sides of our container Okay, now give the font weight of 500. Let's save this and see in the browser. Here you can see we have our logo and here we have our right side. Now again in our CSS, I am specifying our logo and for this one giving a font weight of 500 
with the cursor pointer so that whenever we take our cursor on this it should be like a pointer i think 500 is not making so much difference so i should write here bold yep now it is making more weight let's move towards our right side if i go to deployed version here you can see in the deployed side first we have a menu which is containing four items and then we have a button of get funded okay so to make the right side inside this and right here i would make a div with the class name of first menu and then we have to make a button so for the button i would make a button with the class name of fund button okay simply say it as button for now and inside the end menu i'm gonna make four spans because here you can see in the deployed version we have the four menu items therefore here i am specifying it as four spans let's format the code by pressing shift alt f I have installed the Pretier extension. If I go to this section and if I search for the Pretier, here you can also install this extension. It's very good to have, but not necessary. But I really want to format my code while I'm developing any project. Therefore, I keep it installed. And you can also do the same thing by pressing Shift Alt F after installing this extension. Okay, so for the first span, I am saying what we do. Similarly, for the second span, how it works. Okay, let's save this and see here if I go to my development server and yep, I have the menu items. Okay, let's go to our CSS and inside the right side. First, I will make all the letters as capital letters. So I would say text transform as uppercase and then display flex with the align item center, justify content center, the basic flex properties. Then the gap between these items should be 2.5 RVM with the font size of 0.9 RVM. Let's save and see. Yes. Okay. Now I'm targeting the specific menu class that we have specified here. Okay. So inside the menu, I'm again making a display flex, align item center, justify content center, and the gap of 2.5 RDM. Yep, looking fine. The next thing that I can do, I would say, as I have done on the nav logo, the cursor as pointers. Similarly, in the end menu, I have some spans. By writing this format, I'm targeting all of these spans. Sorry. Yep, all of these spans. If I over this class, you can see it is saying first we have the end menu element, and then inside the end menu element, we have the span class. So for those one, I am saying cursor as pointer. Now, if I over on these items, my cursor is changing to the pointer. Let's make our button now. So for the button, here I would target the fund button. Inside this one, the color of text should be our variable and I have a variable with the class name of dark background and then the background color should be again I have a variable with the class name of third color. Then the padding should be one REM from the top and bottom in this button specifically and from the left and right it should be 1.6 REM. The font size is gonna be one REM with the text transform of capitalized so that each word would start with a capital letter the uppercase transform all the letters in a word to a to the capital letters but the capitalized property transform the first letter of each word into a capital letter okay let's see in the browser yeah i think we should also give some border radius to this button so here i would say the border radius is equal to 999 pixels it also equals to 100 percent but making 999 pixels would not make it distort so let's save this and see okay i should also change the text inside this button and here it will say as get funded let's save this and see yeah looking same as we have on the deployed version so the desktop version of our website is now completed but if i inspect my website by right click and click on this inspect version and by clicking on this icon that is on the top left section, you can see the responsive view of your website. 
So if I collapse it, you can see on the small screens, it is not behaving well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a separate navbar for our small screens, means the tabs and mobiles. Let's go to our VS code. And here the container is starting from the line number six. So I'm minimizing and what can I do here? I can write it as the desktop version. And after this desktop version here, I can write as mobile version, or you can also say it as tab version. Okay, in this mobile version, what I'm going to say, I'm making an other div with the NM container. The NM containers means the navbar mobile container. So NM is standing for navbar mobile. Okay. I know it's pretty much weird, but we have to stick with this. And inside this, I am saying it as mobile version. Now in my CSS, I'm writing by default, the NM container should have the display none because we don't want to render this container on the white screens. So when it should render, I'm writing a media query here. I would say the maximum width of 1200 pixels means when the screen size reaches around 1200 pixels, then make the NM container as display block means then it should become visible. But what we can do to hide our previous navbar that is for the desktop version. So for that thing here, I would say the N container, which is the simple container for the desktop version that should become display none. Let's save this and see in our browser. Now, if I collapse this and as I am hitting that 1200 pixels here, you can see the value I am zooming in. Okay. I, I think I'm at the maximum. So as it is hitting the 1200 pixels, it is changing to the mobile version and on the large screens, it is giving us the normal behavior. So now we have to develop our navbar for this version. Again, I would be making the two things. The first thing should be the logo. So for the logo, I am saying span uh, Zen keeps code. And then on the right side, I should have the menu icon by clicking on the menu icon. You will be able to open and close the menu. For the icon, I am using the React icons library. So I am using an icon BI menu alt right and I can auto import it. I think by pressing control plus space, but the auto suggestion is not working for the react icon. So I can import it manually by just copying the name and go to top of our file and here, write Import this from react icons and then the by folder means the by variant of react icons. Okay. Let's save this and here I can give it a size. So the size should be 30 pixels. Let's format the code and save and see in the browser. Yeah, here I have my logo and here I have the icon. Now apply some CSS for this again in our CSS side after making our NM container display block here, I would say the color inside this means the text color should be white. The display flex with the align item center and justify content space between so that the left and right side would attain the extreme sides of our NM container. The padding should be one REM, the position relative with the background color of our variable primary color. Save this and see. Yep, looking fine. Now to make the weight of this pen as bold, what can I do? I would say inside the NM container target the first child. So here, if I hover this class, here you can see it is clearly saying first we have the element of NM container and then we are targeting the first child inside the NM container. I am saying the font weight as bold. You can also verify in our GSX. First, we have NM container and then we have the direct first child, the Zen keeps code span. Let's save this and see in the browser. Yep, the text is bold now. The next step, we have to make a menu that should come in and come out when we click on this icon. But before making the functionality of coming in and coming out, first make the static version of our menu. After the menu icon, I'm going to make the mobile menu. 
the approach is going to be same so i'm making a div with the class name of nm menu and inside this i am making again four spans actually what can i do i can just simply copy and paste these spans so just copy from here again minimize this container and instead of these empty spans just paste them here let's format the code and see yeah now let's save this and see in the browser yeah here i have this menu go to our css side and yep here our media query is starting and we have to write all of our mobile code inside the media query so i am saying nm menu it should have a position fixed and it should be fixed on the top of our screen so from the top i am giving the distance of 4 rem actually 4 rem is going to be our height of nm container means this container is having a height of 4 rpm so our menu should start below this container therefore i am saying here it should have a distance of 4 rpm from the top then the padding means inside this menu it should have a padding of 3 rpm from the top and right and 2 rpm from the left and right the box sizing should be border box so that it should not change the layout of our website all the padding distance should be included inside the nm menu then the left is zero means from the left it would have zero distance and the display flex let's save and see we are not able to see our menu because we have not specified any background color so first i will specify a background color i would say the primary color now it should be here yeah okay let's see some key things to note here first the width of this menu should be 100% of the screen because on the mobile screen it should take the whole width. Then the items of this menu should be in vertical direction instead of this horizontal direction. So for doing this what I will do first I will make the flex direction as column so that the items should become in the column direction. Then the width of 100%. The font size inside this menu should be 1.2 rem and the z index again 99 because we want when we are opening this menu it should be on the top of everything on our website. Let's save this and see. Yep. Now the only problem is the height of this menu is not correct. It should take the entire height of our screen. So how to calculate the height? I am saying the height of this should be calculated by 100% of view height minus 4 rem again why i am deleting the 4 rem from the complete height of the screen because 4 rem is taken by our nm container at the top in which we have rendered the logo and this menu icon therefore here i am saying the height should be 100% of our view height minus 4 rem let's save this and see yeah now the height is also correct let's do some more styling with these spans so i would say inside the nm menu we have some spans not the a tag so for them make the margin bottom of 2 rem padding bottom of 1 rem with the border bottom of 1 pixel solid then i'm going to use our variable of border color let's save this and see yeah now they are looking good the final thing we have to make in our mobile version of navbar is the get funded button for this mobile version after these spans i am making a div with the class name of mobile funded button and inside this one i am rendering the text of get funded and here i would target it like with the class name m funded button for this one make the width as 100 percent means the entire screen with the background color or again our third color so yeah like this one with the display flex line item center justify content center the box sizing should be border box again for the padding reason because i'm going to specify the padding of one rem and zero rem from the left and right side then the border radius of 90 9 pixel 999 pixel actually 
and the color of text should be again our back dark background color save this and see okay here i have my get funded button but i think something going wrong with this yeah so i have made a typo in the class name uh, the funded spelling is not correct here let's correct it like this and now see again the text color is i think not according to this yeah because here again by typo these are the columns not the colors so yeah now it is looking fine the next thing we have to do we have to make the functionality of going in and out for this menu when we click on the menu icon so again in our vs code on the top of our navbar dot gsx here i am using the use state hook from the react so i would say mobile menu open and set mobile menu open so use the use state hook import it from react and by default the value should be false means by default the menu should not be open okay now on this icon i would say on click what we have to do set the mobile menu open as true so that whenever you gonna click on this icon our state would be changed to the true the next thing we should do as currently the menu is in the center of screen but it should not be in the center by default so here i would say transform translate x minus 150 percent so that it should not be in the view of our screen by default if i save this and visit the browser okay here we have an error which is due to the use state hook we have used we know that the next gsx is serving us the purpose of server side rendering so when we go on a use state hook it means next js knows that we want some kind of interactivity of client the client interactivity is not possible on the server side it should be done when the website is served towards the browser so to fix this problem what we have to do again inside our vs code here on the very top we can specify use client when we specify use client in any section then it is no more server side rendered it becomes client side rendered so now if i save this the error is gone and here we have this icon and our menu is not in the view so how to make it again in the view i am going to my n menu class and here i would specify a style that is going to be dependent on our view state so here i am writing inline style for our transform and here i would say if the mobile menu opened is true only in that condition make the translate x as 0% otherwise if it is not open then use the style from our css which is minus 150% okay so i think yeah here should be translate x like this let's save this and in our browser if i click on this our menu is here but the problem is if i am again clicking on this it is not going back so to fix this i would render this menu icon conditionally what can i do i will enclose this inside the curly braces and here i would make a condition i would if the mobile menu is open then show a different icon otherwise show this icon so i can actually negate this condition so i am saying if the mobile menu is not open then render this icon of menu which can serve the purpose of opening the menu otherwise if it is not the case then what can i do here we can put a colon like this and we can render a different icon which is rx cross 2 again from the react icons okay so to import it on the top i am writing import rx cross 2 from react icons rx directly okay the styling should be saved so the size is again 30 pixels but on click i have to do something else and here we have specified on click the set mobile open should become false let's close our icon 
like this format the code save it and see in the browser yeah now as the menu is open therefore the cross icon is rendered and if i click on this the menu is closed and the menu icon is rendered but again the problem is the effect is not smooth as we have on the deployed version if i inspect this and go to the same size here you can see this effect is very smooth but it is not there so how to achieve this inside the css it's a very easy thing we can just simply say make the transition all 300 ms is in out let's save and now if i do this it is also smooth i think we are having a white line here which is actually a gap between our container and the menu so to remove this line what can i do okay here we have specified the top distance of 4 rem and to fix this i can say the top distance of 3.9 rem similarly from the height instead of deleting 4 rem delete the 3.9 rem let's save and see yeah now there is no more white line we have the same styling as we have on the deployed version and it is also working smooth now so our navbar is now completed it's time to move towards the hero section of our website so again let's close this responsive view for now and switch our gaze towards the hero section so for the hero section let's close this navbar.css and let's minimize it and also i'm closing navbar.gsx then in the directory go to our components folder and here make a new folder with the name of hero inside the hero make a file with the name of hero.gsx and the next file is hero.css now in the hero.gsx write rafce for the react fat arrow function and import its css so from the relative folder hero.css now let's import this component on our home page so below this navbar i would say it simply as hero and it is giving me auto suggestion so i am accepting it and it is imported at the top now let's close this component and see in the browser if it is imported or not okay so we are not able to see the hero text why because we have made the navbar as position absolute so our hero section must be behind this navbar because our hero section is position relative so let's see what we can do more now inside the hero.gsx instead of this pretext i would make a div.h wrapper as we decided earlier and then div container the common class in all of our section and then div dot h container now inside this h container i would say hero section section and then in the css of this means in the hero dot css first i will target the hero wrapper class i would give it a background color of our variable primary color let's make it more expanded yeah like this and then height of 120 percent of our view height and then overflow hidden next i would target our container inside the hero wrapper so i would say inside the h wrapper we would have a container class for that one make the padding top of 8 rem on next i will target the h container class specifically for this section and making it as display flex and then giving it a height of 80 percent of our view height now let's save this and see in the browser yeah here you can see as we have specified the 120 percent of our view height for the h wrapper therefore there is a scroll bar now okay and here is the text saying hero section now it is at the bottom side because we have specified the padding of 8 rm from the top so it is still the position relative but as now it is having the padding top of 8 rm therefore we are able to see this text of hero section now let's take a look at the deployed version so in the deployed version on the hero section we have two things the left side in which we have these images of persons and the right side where we have the title of our hero section some description and this input email box so we will follow the same pattern of left and right side for the hero section as well let's go to our code again and here instead of simply saying hero section now i would say div dot left side of hero section and here i would simply say left side let's make the proper comments here so say it as left side and after this 
make a right side as well and in the right side we will be containing the title so our first div is gonna be hero title inside the hero titles i am gonna specify three spans in the first span let's say redefine now let's format the code so after this title we will be having the description of title so here i would make a div h description means the hero description and here I am just simply copy and pasting a text to save the time. Let's format it again. So I am simply saying here, let me zoom out. Revenue based funding and execution support designed for early stage founders. Okay. At the last, we would have an email box. So for now, I'm just simply saying a span, which is containing a text of email box. Let's save this and see in the browser. Yeah. So here I have all the text that I just made. Now let's go to our CSS and try to style all of these things. Okay, as we have made our hero container as display flex. So next thing, make the line item center and justify content. Uh, maybe space between can work, but the most stable option is to make justify content space around. So this would work like space around because we want some gap on the left and right side as well and in between as well. If I go to deployed version here, you can see there is some gap here. There is some gap here and there is also a gap between both of the sections. So go to our development server and in the VS code, let's continue our styling. As we have specified the height of ATVH, I am also specifying a position relative. Now for the left side, I am just simply specifying H left. And for now, I am simply saying a flex of one means it would take the 50% width of our actual H container width. Why I'm saying 50% because I'm going to specify flex one as well for the right side. So H right now, we first style the right side. And for this one, I'm simply saying flex one, the display flex with the flex direction of column because we want all the title in the column direction. And then the gap between each span should be two RM. Now let's target the H title. In the H title, I'm again making display flex, flex direction column then the gap of 2rm why i am doing this because if you see here in the h title we have three spans redefine how you grow your business and if i go to deploy version here you can see these three spans really redefine how you grow your and digital business these three spans are in a column direction therefore here i am saying the title should also be display flex with the flex direction of column now give some color to this so here I am using my variable of third color and then the font size of 4rm with the font weight of bold. Let's save this and see in the browser what happened. So this is the result in the browser. I think we forgot to make the right side in our code. So yes, this is the right side and here we are directly defining our all the tags. Before defining anything, we should make the right side div. Let's close it at the end of email box, format the code again. So now we have the proper left side and then we have the proper right side. Okay, let's save this and see in the browser now. Now you can see the left side and right side are having the equal width. Okay, let's continue our styling on the right side now. For more in the H title now, uh, I would say the text transform should be uppercase and then let's move to our H title and then inside the H title, we have the third child. So third child, why I'm targeting the third child specifically. In the deployed version, you can see for the third child, we have the color of white instead of this third color. So therefore here I, I'm targeting the third child inside our hero title and saying the color as white for this one. Now let's target the H description, means the hero description, making the color white as well for this, the font size of 1.4 RM with the line height of 2 RM. Let's save this and see here. Okay, yeah. The digital business is not getting contained in one line. It is spanning up to the two rows. So how to fix this? There is a very simple solution. I can increase the width of right side a little bit more. So what I will do on the edge right, I would make the flex as 1.25% and the left side is again only 1% means the 50 and something more than 50%. So here now the digital business is only in one line, same as we have in the deployed version. 
Now let's continue our JSX towards this email box. So for the email box, I'm going to make a separate component because we would require this email box again in our footer. Therefore, I'm just making a separate component of email box and then we would reassign that component to the footer as well. Okay, so inside the components, let's make a new folder and give it a name of email box in which I'm making a file of email box dot GSX and email box dot CSS. Fine. Now make the CSS on the right side and the JSX write RAFCE and import its relative CSS. So import email box dot CSS. Let's save this and in the hero section instead of this pen, simply call our newly made email box component and see in the browser if it is saying yeah, still we have the text of email box means it is working fine. I think I should make a little bit of zoom in so you guys can see it properly. Yeah. So here I have the email box text. Okay. Okay. So inside the email box, I'm going to specify the three parts of this email box. The first part is going to be the icon of email. The second one is the input and the third one is get funded button. So let's start this. I am giving the most parent name as the email box in which first we have the icon so for the icon i am making a simple div in which i am specifying the icon of lu mail i can import it from the react icon so just copy the name and here on the top lu mail from react icons and then lu directory okay so for this icon i am specifying a size of 30 pixels for this also i am specifying the color so for the color i am saying it as gray let's save this and see in the browser yeah here i have the icon now after the icon i have the input so for the input i am simply making an input and making its type as email instead of simply saying as text now we have to give a placeholder for this so for the placeholder say enter email okay and then there is a third part so third part is the get funded button or you can simply say a button of this email box and here i will make div dot get funded in which i am writing a text of get funded okay let's save this and see in the browser yeah here i have all the three parts the icon the input box and this get funded text let's start the css part of this section so for the css part here in the email box dot css I am targeting email box means the most parent section and giving it a background color of white. Now the padding from the top and bottom should be one RM and the two RM from the left and right. The border radius, the border radius is again going to be 999 pixels. Then the display flex because all of these things should be in the row direction. And then the align item center, the width should be 70% of our edge container. Not the edge container, but the right side of our edge container means the edge right. So I'm saying the email box should have the 70% width of our right section. And then the position relative with the overflow hidden. Let's save this and see. Yeah. So here I have the basic format as I have on the deployed version. After the email box, I am targeting the input inside the email box giving it the outline of none so that we should not see the black border on clicking on the input and then also making the border of none with the margin left of 1 rem and the font size of 1 rem let's save this and see here okay let's specify the color for the text inside this input so i am just copy and pasting a value you can also do the same thing from this video so it should be RGB 150, 150 means the three times of 150 and then the font family. So the font family is going to be same as we have defined for our whole body, Josephine Sans and then the flex of one. Flex one means it should contain the maximum width of our email box. Okay. So let's save this and see here. Yeah. So here I can write and i think the phone family is not applied let's see why it's not applied so what we can do to fix this let's inspect our website and here let's target the 
whole container okay so we have this app class here and this is the font family that is generated by the next js so what can i do i am just copying this complete value from here please remember i am targeting the app class in the inspect elements and then i am just copying the font family that is made by the next JS for our complete website i am copying this value and in our code here instead of writing this i am just pasting that value let's save this and now in our website yeah the font family is applied and it's working fine let's move forward and style this get funded button for the input email box so here write get funded the class name of our button if i go to gsx here you can see i have specified the class name of get funded for this one so i am targeting it and making the position absolute please remember that our email box has the position relative so this button is going to be position absolute in relation with the email box okay so when i am saying the right side of 0.5 rem for the get funded button means it would have the 0.5 rem distance from the right side of this email box okay now i am targeting the height as the 80 percent of our email box then the background color for the background color i am targeting the secondary color variable and then display flex line item center justify content center the padding should be 0 rem vertically and 2 rem horizontally the border radius again 999 pixels the very basic styling therefore i am doing it very quickly and the color of font inside this should be the white let's save this and see here yeah so here we have our button i think it's pretty much same as we have here uh the placeholder e input size is smaller than the text size on the deployed version so what can i do here uh, i would target the placeholder of this input i can do something like this placeholder and make the font size as 0.8 rem for this now let's try here yeah now it's working fine and looking good as we have on the deployed version the next part we have to make the left side of our hero section and then finally we have to make the animations for our hero section okay so i have made some data for the left side of our hero section so let me go to our directory and let's collapse all our directory then inside the src we have utils folder and inside the utils folder we have data.js let's open it here and inside the data.js you can see i have an array on the right top which is saying hero data so this is an array of object and each object is representing a person on the left side of our hero section if i open the deployed version here you can see each person first have a specific image then have a specific background for it so to reflect the same strategy here i have made the src which is the path of that person in our directory if i open the public folder here you can see i have the hero inside the hero i have person one two three up to the six so this structure is first representing the path of the image then the background color of its container and then this is something relative to the animation we will see it on later so i think now you understand how this hero data array is working let's close this and inside the page.js let's close okay so let's close this email box and inside the hero.jsx let's collapse the right side and in the left side here i'm gonna make some images row again on the deployed version if you see we have two rows in the first row first we have the three images one two and three and in the second row again we have the three images third fourth and fifth so i'm gonna make the two divs first div will contain these three images and second div will contain the bottom three images so how i can do this inside the left side i am making a div into image row and inside the image row i'm gonna call the hero data so let's call hero data as i write the hero data it is giving me auto suggestion to import it automatically from the data.js so i'm accepting this and here it is imported on the top now hero data dot slice 0 to third index and then map through each person now so actually you know inside the data.js the hero data is an array of six objects however for the first image row we want only the three images 
Therefore, I am slicing the array up to the third index 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. And then I am mapping up to that index and I am saying for each person, let's return something. What I am returning, I am returning a JSX and in this JSX again, I am making simply a div. Okay, let's specify the index number as well. And here, give it a class name of as person pill and give the key of this div as the i because react would raise a warning if we don't give a specific key while iterating through the array so it's always a good practice to have the key of the containers while it is the when it is the result of something iterating over an array so now inside this person pill what we next have i would have the person pill bg div okay now inside the person pill bg div i would finally have the image of that person so for the image first i have to specify the src as you know the person dot src would be the source of this image and in the alt i can simply again say the person dot src so person dot src like this let's minimize a little bit more so we can see it properly okay so i think now you understand how this image row is working let's save this and see in the browser okay so yes here i have this image of course it is not styled therefore it is not looking good but if i inspect this so if i click here let me zoom in so here you can see i have this person pill this person so i have three person pills and each person pill is containing its own bg and its own bg it's have its own image now quickly make the second row as well and then move towards its styling so after the first image row again i am making the div image row inside this again i am just simply copy and pasting this logic so just pasting it like this and now our index for slicing is from 3 to 6 everything else is gonna remain same so let's save this and see yeah now open our css side so here i have the hero.css and here i have my h left means the hero left so let's make the comment right side styling and then this one is the left side styling so left side styling now first of all i'm gonna make it as position relative with the display flex and the flex direction of column because we want both the rows in the column direction first row would contain three images and second row would again contain the three images and the gap between them should be two rem and the line item center with the padding top of five rem let's save this and see in the browser okay let's refresh because we have not specified a correct size for the images therefore it is looking so much distorted but it's actually working because now we can see a gap between those images and i think it should be according to what we have mentioned yep it is the gap of 2 rm with the padding top of 5 rm after this edge left i would target the image row for each image row make the display flex with the gap of 2 rm yeah here you can see now these images are in the row direction and then the next thing is the person pill means the container of each person for this one i am giving the height of 15 rem with the width of 16 rem the border radius again going to be 999 pixels okay let me zoom in a little bit and then the overflow hidden so that no image should go outside of this person pill let's save and here we have these six pills so person pill background again for this one i'm gonna say the border radius of 999 pixels with the height of 100 percent and the width of 100 percent again with the overflow hidden now let's target the images inside these person pill background so i would say person pill bg is containing image for that one make the width 100 percent this is the point where we are making the size of our images correct and then the image fit as cover the scale i would want to scale two percent of their original size and then the margin top of five rm 
let's save this and see in the browser here we have the images okay so there is a type of cut on the top of each pill so let's fix this what can i do in my code here instead of giving margin top of 5 rem i would give a margin top of 4 rem now let's see in the browser yeah these pills are now in the correct shape the only thing remaining we have to move the second pill in each row towards the top side as you see in this design the second pill is not in alignment with the left and right pills they are a little bit moved upward so how we can do this in this css i would make a very simple type of queue i would say in the image row we have the nth child 2 means in each row target the second child and then transform translate y and on the y direction translate it up to minus 4 rem it is actually the margin top that we given in the image so yeah now here you can see they are looking pretty much same as we have on the deployed version it's time to finally make the animations for our hero section now i am switching to the deployed version and let's try to analyze the animations in deep okay so for analyzing the animation just focus on this part for now let's forget about the right side okay so when i refresh my screen let me refresh then see there are two animations happening with each pill let me try again first the outer div that we have specified as person pill that div grows up and then the inner image is rising up let's try again here you can see there is a little bit delay between the rising of the outer div and then the inner image let me zoom more and let's try to see again here first the outer div is rising up and then after a little delay the inner image is rising up now we will try to animate same kind of animations on our development server so let's go to our hero.jsx and now you know that for each pill we have to make the two types of animations for this outer div of person pill bg and then the second animation would be for this image so on the very top here i am going to make some variants but before doing that as we are going to use the framer motion for these animations let me import the motion from framer motion first so import motion and then here right from framer motion now let's go to these divs so here with the person pill bg i'm gonna say motion.div and then for this image again i am saying motion.image so, so that framer motion would know that it has to animate these divs and images that are specified as motion div and motion.image similar kind of stuff i have to do with the second row so motion.div and then the motion dot image let me do it quickly motion dot image now first let's make some variants for our person pill background that should animate first so here i'm gonna make a fat arrow function const variants it will accept a prop of the delay that how much delay should be there while performing this animation we would make it dynamic as you see in the deployed version the animations are not happening in parallel there is a little bit delay between each pill when they are animating okay so for the variants there will be two variants the initial type of element when the animation is starting and then the final type of element when the animation is ending up so initial is specified as initial and the final is animate now I would say on initial for each person background make the y axis distance of 18 rem okay and then when they are animating make them y axis distance of 0 rem then i'm going to specify some kind of transitions for each animation i would say the type is going to be spring type of animation that is specific with the framer motion framer motion comes with this type of animation spring you can play with different kind of options that comes with the spring like the damping delay stiffness mask but here i'm only going to use damping which is required and i am going to give it a value of 25 now the duration of animation i am going to say 2.5 seconds with the delay that we're going to specify here 
so our variants are now ready now let's go to our first image row and within the first image row let's target this person pill bg and here we can specify the initially like how the initial animation should look and i am saying the initial animation should be equal to initial as in the variants we have this initial key here so i am saying initially the state of element should be according to initial variant then what to do animate it up to the animate variant then we have to specify the variants for this one so i am saying variants into person dot delay so now here you can understand why i have specified the delay in our data array if i go to my data array again here in the data.js you can see i have specified the delay with each person delay 0.1 second 0.3 0 0.2 i have specified for these animations and then at the end i'm gonna say style style is again the background color that we have specified in our array so background color is equal to person dot bg let's format the code and double check it yeah let's save this and see in the browser okay okay so there is an error again this error is because of the server side rendering the framer motion is using a kind of use effect and use effect is only possible on the client side so again to fix this issue we again have to repeat the same step on the very top we can specify it as use client now let's save this and see the error is gone if i refresh here you can see the animations and this animation is actually looking beautiful the next thing we have to animate the images inside those divs the step is again gonna be same so first i would say the initial variant is equal to initial and then animate it so for the animate use the animate variant and now i have to make the variants so for the variants i would make a function with the name of image variants so let's define this function of image variants on the very top after this variants here i would say const image variants uh, this should not accept any kind of delay here i would say initially the y-axis distance should be 8 rem and then when it is animating then the animate value on the animation make the zero rem distance on the y-axis and we have to specify the transition so for the transition the type should be spring the duration of animation should be two seconds and the stiffness as i mentioned to you earlier that you can play with the mass damping and stiffness with the spring animation let's save this and yeah i think it should be ready to animate now see in the browser now if i refresh and here we have this beautiful effect of animation the same kind of effect we should repeat on the second image row so just copy these values means all the props and here in the person pill bg simply paste them let's format the code save and see in the browser if i refresh yeah. yeah the next thing we have to make an arrow in the background of our hero section you can see in the deployed region we have an arrow but it is not present here so what i can do let's minimize these image rows okay now on the top of our hero container inside our normal container i'm gonna make an image so here i'm simply gonna say image with the class name of hero arrow and then i have to specify the src so i would say inside the hero folder i have the hero arrow dot png let's give some alt attribute so i'm simply saying it as arrow okay let's save this and see in the browser uh, i think i have misspelled the name yeah it should be hero like this now i have this hero image but as of now it is position relative therefore all the other stuff on our hero section has moved down and because we have set the height as 120 view height therefore we are not able to see the other stuff because of the overflow hidden okay so how to fix this i am again going to my hero.css and on the very top after this container here i would say target our h arrow and for this one make the position absolute with the top distance of 5 rem 
width of 100% of hero section with the maximum width that this can take is 60 rem now i am saying the z index at 0 so that it should be behind all other elements on our screen let's save and see here we have the beautiful arrow in the background as we have on the deployed version the next thing we have to do we have to animate this email box as on the deploy vision if i refresh you can see this email box is also animating very smoothly so same kind of stuff we have to repeat on our development server let's close all the css files here and close all the files from here also now open email box.gsx so this one is our email box.gsx first import the motion from framer motion on the top of email box.gsx so you can import by writing import motion from framer motion and then we can again repeat the steps of making variants but we can also define the animation directly on the div so first make it as motion.div so framer motion can work on this div and then we have to specify the initial position means the initial value of the animation so initially i would say the width of this div should be only 0.5 rem and then the border radius so border radius i would give it as 100 percent now the second parameter is gonna be while in view okay while in view would execute when the particular element comes in the viewport okay so i am saying when this email box comes in the viewport then make the width 70 percent of the right side and the border radius uh 999 pixels so we can specify it like this and then we can also specify the transition type so i would say the transition type would be ease out for this one and duration of this animation is gonna be one second okay so i think it's enough let's save this format the code so here now i'm just repeating this that first we have specified the initial value of the animation and then when this element comes into the view let's see in the browser here you can see it is animating very smoothly i know the inner elements are not animating but just try to see the outer div it is working exactly as we want okay now the next element is this icon so for this icon again make the motion dot div like this okay so here i'm going to make an animation that we'll be using many times in our website so instead of writing that animation variants again and again i would make a single file and then we will be reusing it again and again so inside our directory okay here inside the utils i would make a new file with the name of animations.js in animations.js let's write a container variant so here i have made this here you can see it is simply a fat arrow function which is taking the delay as a prop and by default i am saying the delay should have the zero second delay and then there is two variants the off screen variant and the on screen variant off screen i am saying the opacity should be zero and from the y means from the vertical axis it should have the three pixel distance and then when element comes into the view then make the opacity as one and distance should be the original position of the element on the screen okay then here i have specified the transition type as spring the duration as two seconds and delay would be the value that we have passed as the prop let's simply save this and then in the email box i can say variants is gonna be equal to container variants that we have made in the utils so it is auto imported on the top here you can see okay now we have to specify the initial initially i am saying off screen and then while in view so here i can say while in view it should have the value of on screen variant and as container variants is a fat arrow function so we should call it as a function and here pass the delay of 0.6 seconds let's save this and try to see in the browser now if i refresh my website okay here we have a smooth animation on the icon okay let's move forward so after specifying while in view i would also want to specify the viewport so here i am saying viewport once equal to true so what is the meaning of once true i am saying that run this animation for the first time when icon comes into the viewport it should not be like that if you are scrolling down and then scrolling back to the hero section then animation should not run again
So this is the way how we can do this amplifying viewport once as true. If I specify it as once false, the animation would run again and again when you scroll up and down again and again. So making it as once true, animation would run only once for the first time. Similarly, for the input, I can again make it as motion dot input. And essentially, I am just copy and pasting all of these props. So just control C and control V. Here I am giving the delay of 0.7 seconds and again for this div I am simply saying motion.div then again paste the same props and here give the delay of 0.9 seconds. Let's save this and see in the browser so if I refresh the page the animation is exactly same that we want. The next step we have to make the hero section responsive for the small screen. As of now if I inspect and enable this responsive view button then here you can see on the small screens it is not behaving well so let's see how we can make this responsive on the small screens as well let's go to vs code again and here i'm going to open my hero.css i'm opening it side by side so you should have a reference of our hero.jsx as well okay so here you can see our JSX and here is the CSS of our hero section. Now on the very bottom, here I would write a media query. So there is only one media query and which is I am saying the max width when the device reaches the width of 124 pixels then execute this CSS. So here I am saying not the execute but just run this CSS. So height should be maximum content of our hero wrapper and then the hero wrapper container should have the padding top of 5 rem on the small screen and the h container which is our hero container should have the height of auto now, now you can see i am removing all kind of absolute values that we specified for the hero container earlier that we specified the height of hero container should be 80 percent of view height and similarly we specified the hero wrapper should have the 120 percent of view height but now on the small screens, I am saying it should have height of maximum content and this should have the height of auto. Then I would say instead of row direction between the left and right side, now they should be converted to the flex direction of column, align item center and the gap between them becomes the 4 REM with the padding top of 3 REM. Again, let's save this and see in the browser. So here are the results. Let me zoom out to 100% or maybe 75%. Yep. So I think it's generally working fine. This arrow should be removed on the small screen. So first of all, let's fix this. Hero arrow should be display none. Let's save this and see. Yep. It's looking pretty good. Now we have to fix these headings and titles. So again, after the hero arrow i would say in the right side because in the right side we contain all kind of title and description and that email box so for that one first of all i am making the flex as one because previously we specified as flex 1.25 but this is no longer needed on the small screens and then the align item center okay next thing is h title make it again align item center with the font size of 2.2 rem let's see yep looking pretty nice after this target the hero description and make the font size of 1.2 rem for that one with the width of 80 percent of total right side means means the 80 percent of our total screen okay so after this i would say text align should be centered so let's save this and see in the browser yeah so our total hero section is now responsive for all kind of screens on the tab on the mobile it is having a beautiful look on next, let's make the video section in our website. If I go to the deployed version, here you can see there is a beautiful video which is animating on scrolling. So first let's make the static version of this video and then let's see how we can make this animation which is binded with our scroll. So let's start this. I will again go to my VS code and here let's close this hero.css and inside the components folder let's make a new folder with the name of branding video and in this again i'm gonna make two files the first one is branding video.jsx and second one is the css so branding 
video.css. Let's open them side by side like this. And in the JSX, write RAFCE for the fat error function. Let's save this and close this email box JSX and hero JSX as well. And open our home page, so page.js. Okay. So after this hero section here, I will place this branding video section like this. Let's save this and see in the browser if it is imported or not. Yeah, so here I can see the text branding video means it is imported successfully. Now again, go to our code and instead of this pretext here, I will make first of all the wrapper. Uh, I think in this section, we don't necessarily need the wrapper because there is no background color for the video and video is only placed in the center. So I can directly make the branding video container and in this container, let's make an other container, which is the common one and then place the video tag inside the video tag now place the proper source that what should be the source of our video so inside the source i would say video.mp4 let's see where this video.mp4 is placed in our code so if i go to the public here you can see this is the video.mp4 directly in the public folder therefore i am just directly saying forward slash video.mp4 and it would be targeted and then we have to specify the type. So I would say type with the extension of MP4. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. Let's save this and see the browser. So here I can see the video, which is of course not automatically playing. So to play it automatically, we have to pass some props to our video tag. So first prop is loop. The second prop is muted. And then I can say it as autoplay with the control so i can specify control as a empty string let's format the code now save this and see in the browser okay if i refresh my page now here you can see the video is now automatically playing and there are no control displayed over the video it's time to do some styling for this so again i would go to my branding video.css and here i would say i have a branding video container in which I'm again having a container so make that display flex align item center justify content center and the overflow hidden the very basic CSS properties nothing much to explain and then I am having a BV video so let me make a class name of BV video so for this video tag I would give it a class name of branding video like this let's save this and again go to our CSS now for this video, I would say the width should be 95% of the container with the border radius of video should be 4 REM. And then if we notice on our deployed version, here you can see the video is not placed directly after the hero section. Some part of video is in the hero section. So for doing this in the CSS here, I would write the margin top of minus 10 REM with the Z index of one so that it should be on the top of previous hero section. Okay, so now import our CSS file in the JSX of branding video. So here I would write import from the relative folder. Let's save this and now see in the browser. So these are the results on the browser. Here you can see the problem is our video is not visible completely. The upper part of video is invisible because we have our container with the property of overflow hidden. So if I make it as overflow visible and now if I go to browser here, you can see we are able to see the video completely. Let's inspect this video on the small screens and try to make it responsive as well. Okay, so I think on the small screens, the border radius and the position of the video should be a little bit changed. So in the CSS here at the bottom, I would write a media query. I would say media and the maximum width on the maximum width of 1024 pixels. Then with the BV video, make the margin top of one REM. And then if the size of screen is even smaller than 102, 4 pixels, then what to do for the PV video, make the border radius around 2 REM. Let's save this and now see in the browser. Okay. Yeah. So now our video section is also responsive for all kinds of screens. Here you can see it is behaving well. I think the hero section should have a little bit 
padding on the bottom so to fix this i would go to my hero dot css and here where we have written the media queries instead of giving the padding top of 3 rem if i make it the padding bottom of 3 rem and now see in the browser yeah now it's looking good actually better than the previous one okay now let's see how we can animate this video on scrolling again for this we will be using the framer motion so first of all on the top of this import the now let's make this video as the motion element so and i'm also gonna create a ref for the video so here i would say const ref which is the instance of use ref from the react so here it is already imported on the top and i think by default it should have the value of null like this now for this video i would provide the ref like ref okay the next thing we have to do we have to calculate that how much this element is scrolled on the screen so for calculating the amount of scrolling i would use the hook from the framer motion which is dm dash u scroll so here i would say u scroll from framer motion again it is imported automatically on the top by the vs code extensions and then i would give a target so for the target i am giving the reference of our video so it is equal to ref and then i have to specify the offset so i am saying the offset as the start of the video with the end of screen and the end of the video with the end of the screen so what does this offset actually means so this point is the start of the video you can say that this complete line this complete top of the video is the start of this video section it is actually the start of the reference that we have made and this is actually the end of our screen here you can see so now framer motion is asking us that from which point do you want to calculate the amount of scroll so i am saying when the top of this video means when this line hit the end of the screen means our actual client screen then start calculating the amount of scroll this means if i scroll up then here you can see the top of the video is actually at the end of the screen so framer motion would start calculating the amount of scroll from that point and then after that it is asking that to which point do you want to calculate that scrolling so let me change the color and here i have written end of this video section so what is the end of this video section this part means this ending or you can say the bottom of the video is the end of the video section so i am saying when the end of the video section hits again the end of the client screen then stop calculating the amount of scroll so i think now this makes sense and it would be easier for you to follow the code let me close this and go to the vs code again here you can see this is the start of the scrolling and this is the end of the scrolling and as a result it would provide us the scroll y progress there are also many types of props that it can provide but here the only concerned output is the scroll y progress okay then i would calculate the amount of scale means how much the video should be scaled on scrolling so for this one again i would use a second hook from the framer motion which is named as use transform and in the use transform i would give the scroll y progress as the prop and i would say the scroll y progress would move from the 0 to 1 means the minimum amount of the scroll y progress would be 0 and the maximum it can take as 1 now scale these values from 0 to 1 on the measure of 0.6 to 1 means it would transform the scale from 0 1 to 0.6 to 1 and then we would use this scale to style our video so here i would write the style and in the style i am simply saying at scale like this let's save this and let me double check that everything is looking fine again as we are using the use ref so we have to make this a uh, client element means the client side rendered element so on the top i would say use client let's save this and here you can see if i am scrolling down the video is scaling up and if i am scrolling up the video is scaling down so this is how you can use the use scroll and use transform hook of the framer motion you can also make many other types of beautiful animations by using this hook by the way let's move forward in our tutorial let's close this branding video.jsx 
and also I'm closing all type of CSS from the right side and then inside the components folder. Okay, let me go to components folder. Here I'm gonna make a new folder with the name of what we do. And inside this again, I'm gonna make two files, what we do dot GSX and the CSS. So what we do dot CSS. Now open them side by side and here inside the GSX write again RAFCE and import this component inside the page.js after the branding video. So what we do and yep it is imported on the top here you can see let's save this and see in the browser. Here I have the text what we do means it is imported successfully. Okay, so inside the GSX again, I'm going to do the same thing first wrapper, then container, and then the section container. So, first of all, div.wwd wrapper, the wwd stands for what we do, and then div.container, and then div.wwd.container. First of all, we're going to have the head of our section. So here I would say as WWD head and in this head we would have the title tag and description of the section. If I go to the deployed version, here you can see we have the tag, we have the title and description. All of these three spans would be inside the head of the section. So this is what we are currently making in the code. Okay, so let me quickly make span multiply by three. So it would make the three spans. Let's format the code. And in the first span, I would say what we do. And in the second span, I am simply copy and pasting a text. You can also do from the video. And then similarly in the third span, which is the description one, I am again pasting a text. Okay. Let's quickly give them the class name. So for the first span, I would give a class name of tag. And for the second one, I would give a class name of title. And similarly for the third one, I would give the class name of description. I have used the short form of description only DES and let's format the code again and see in the browser what are the results. So yes, here I have all the text. Now try to style this text. First of all, I would target the wrapper. So inside the CSS write WWD wrapper. And we should import the CSS first. So import from the relative folder what we do dot CSS. Let's save this. And here for the wrapper, I am giving the position relative. And then there is WWD container. And for that one, I am giving the margin top of 10 rem display flex, flex direction of column. Because uh, if I go to deployed version here, you can see. So these are the three parts of this section. First, the head. The second one is these two blocks. And the third one is this final block. So all of them in a column direction. Therefore, here I am saying flex direction column. And the gap between each of the parts should be 2RM with the line item center, justify content center. Let's save this and see in the development. Okay. As currently, we have given the margin top of 10RM. So here we can see the gap. Now let's target the head of our section. So I would say WWD head and here display flex again flex direction column with the gap of 1.5 RDM between each span align item center justify content center and the width is 75% of the complete container. Let's save this and yeah now these three spans are in a column direction. The next thing is I have to style tag title and description accordingly. But these three things we're going to use again and again all over the website. So instead of making it specific with this section in the what we do.css, I would rather prefer to make it a global CSS. So here inside our directory, I should have in the app router, I have the page.css. So I am opening page.css and here I will write the styling for all of these three spans. So the first thing is the tag. So for the tag, I am going to use the color of our variable, which is the secondary color. And then the font size is going to be 1.5 RDM with the font weight bold. Now the title. So for the title, I'm going to use font size of 2.6 RDM with the color of our variable title color. And font weight bold. Text align center, line height 3.5. 
five REM with the text transform capitalized. Okay. Similarly, for the description, I'm going to paste a very common CSS. You can also do from the video font size of 1.5 REM, color of text color and line height of 2 REM. Let me repeat again. We have all of these variables defined in our globals.css. So here we have all of these variables. Let's make some of the more global text styling that we're going to need as we move ahead so the next one would be the secondary title that we would need so i am specifying font size of 2 rem with the color of again our variable title color and then the font weight 600 text line center line height 3 rem with the text transform of capitalize and similarly the last one is gonna be the normal text for the normal text i am saying that color of text color size 1.1 rem and the line height of 1.8 rem all of these stylings are very common and easy to understand therefore i am doing it very quickly and let's write the media queries so for the media queries first of all i would write the media query for the screen size of 768 pixels so here the size only the media query is only related with the sizes of these fonts so i have changed the font size according to the maximum width of 768 pixels and then if the screen size is even smaller than 768 then here i am saying uh let's remove the description from here format the code then i am saying make the title around 1.8 rem and secondary title around 1.6 rem let's save this and now we can continue our section of what we do dot css okay so we have completed the css of our wwd head and now move to our gsx here i want to give a proper comment so we can differentiate between different parts very easily here i would say head of section let's see the deployed version for once if i go deployed version here you can see I have two blocks. The first block is this blue advances and the second one is this blue seed. Let me highlight it properly. So the first block is this one and the second block is this one. And both of these blocks in a parent block, okay, which is the part of our overall section, which is in the column direction in relation with this heading and with this blue growth spot. So we have to make a container, which is again going to contain the two containers so let's see how we can do this i will go to our code and here let's minimize the head after this i'm gonna make the two blocks for these blocks let's make the parent container first with the name of wwd blocks and inside this one make the wwd block multiply by two so there would be two blocks here i would say the first block and similarly for the second one i would say the second block now let's start from the first block so here first of all i'm going to make the two spans that are required as the heading of this block in the first block uh, so in the first span we're going to say blue advances like this one and in the second span i am just copy and pasting a text like this let me format the code and minimize the css I would say it as secondary title and for this one i would give a class name of text again let me make the proper comments so here i would say the first block and here i would say it as second block okay so let me go to the deployed version again here you can see after this title and this text we have again three nested containers inside each block here I'm going to say div dot block features and inside block features we have to render some data. I have already made some data in our data file. So if I go to the data dot js and let me minimize the hero data here you can see these features. These features are for the what we do sections and these are total six features three for each block. So for the first block we require the first three features. So let me render the first three features here. Here I would say the features are imported from the utils data. Here you can see it is imported automatically. And then slice the first three elements from this array. And then map over those three elements. For each element, make the prop as feature and the index as i. And return some JSX. And in the JSX, 
first of all we will be having an image for the image i'm going to use the next image so if i go on the top here you can see the image component is imported from the next image and for this one i'm going to give it a source so for the source uh, i'm saying source is equal to feature dot src and then alt is equal to simply feature the width of this element is going to be 60 pixels and similarly height would also be the 60 pixels let me format the code and here vs code is raising a warning that we have not made the key as we are iterating over an array so here i would give the key as i means the index number the second thing that is required inside this is the title so here i would say feature dot title let's save this and see in the browser what happened okay so here i have all the relative text but i think the images are not rendering properly so let's see again inside the data dot gs okay so we have the key name as the icon not the src so instead of src if i write icon and save this now here we can see the images as well please remember that we are still working on the block number one we have not touched the block number two which is this block blue c because it is just a replica of first block so we would do it very quickly and we will see it in detail the first block after the head target the most parent container of the blocks which is the blocks so for the blocks i'm gonna give the width of 100 percent with the display flex and the gap of 2 rm so here what it is if i go to a deployed version let me open the ip pen i am saying about this distance between these two blocks i am saying make this distance about 2 rm okay now style each block so here inside this wwd block i would say i am having an individual block with the name of block make the width as flex one so both of the blocks would have the width 50 percent and then display flex flex direction column why i'm seeing flex direction column again if i go deployed version and here you can see this title this text and this container is in the column direction so therefore i am saying this block should have the flex direction of column then the gap between the elements should be one rem with the align item center justify content center padding of two rem text align center the box shadow again i have my own variable with the name of shadow which we're gonna use and the border radius of two rem so I think the basic styling is done. Let's see in the browser. Here you can see we have the two blocks. The second block is only saying second block. And in the first block, the title and text is rendering correctly. We have to fix these inner features. If I go to the deployed version, here you can see these three features are again in one row. I know that the second feature is a little bit moved towards the bottom, but ultimately these three features are in the row direction so if we again gonna use the flex property for making those features so here i would say block features and make the margin top of one rem with the display flex and gap of one rem then for each block feature again i would say flex of one so that each feature would take the equal width and then display flex flex direction of column line item center justify content center so why here i have made the flex direction of column again on the deployed version here you can see this image and this text are in the column direction and in the center of the container therefore here i have specified the flex direction of column now the text align as center gap of one rem between the elements and then I'm going to specify a border with a specific color. So you can copy and paste this value from this video. And the border radius is relatively small of 1 rem and the padding of 1 rem. Let's save this and see here. The styling is not applied properly on those features. So let's double check in our GSX. Okay, so inside the GSX, we have not given this div the class name. So this div should have a class name of feature like this let's save this and now see in the browser yeah now it's rendering correctly 
we have to fix the font size and color of the text so again in the css side i would say the color as our variable title color and then font size of 1.1 rem with the line height of 1.6 rem and the font weight of 500 let's try it yeah looking fine similarly let's complete our second block very quickly we just have to do copy and paste so here we have our first block starting from here and ending here let me just copy and paste this completely and in where we have written the second block text paste it here change the title to blue sea and also change this text so i'm just copy and pasting this text like this one and here inside the block which is instead of slicing from 0 to 3 now i'm going to slice from 3 to 6. let's save this and see in the browser here you can see the second blocks also rendered correctly on next we have to shift the second feature in the first block a little bit down and in the second block we have to shift the second feature a little bit upward so let's do it in our css so here first of all let's target our first block and then inside the block features target the nth child to means the second feature and for that one make the margin top of 3 rem let's save this and see in the browser here you can see it is shifted down a little bit but the problem is the heights of the side section is no is no more correct so to correct this what can i do here at the bottom of block feature i would say the height would be equal to maximum content or instead of maximum content i think the fit content would work best so let's see this yeah now it is fixed so similar kind of stuff we have to do with the first and third feature in the second block so for doing this here i am writing a target css like this one so here i am saying in the second block target the block features and inside the block features target the first child means the first feature and similarly the third feature and for both of them make the margin top of 2 rem let's save this and see yeah so all of the alignment is in the correct shape on next if i go to reply here on next we have to make this last block of blue growth sport so i would be doing it very quickly because i think now you have the complete context how to make the titles how to make the flex containers so let's go up and i'm minimizing this wwd blocks and here i would say as sport block okay for this port block i would say div dot wwd sport and inside this the section is divided into the two parts the left side and the right side if i go deployed version the first side is this one and the other side is this one and both of these blocks are in the row direction so therefore we're going to make it display flex so right now we're going to complete this then we see how we can do this so this is our left side where we have made two spans and after the left side here I am going to say the and in the right side again this is just the div with the two spans and these two spans are having some text now go to our CSS first of all target the parent container of WWD sport and for this one I have made the display flex with the padding of 2 rem I have given the same shadow the border radius the common flex properties margin top of 2.5 rem and the background color of white and then i am saying there are two divs in the ww sport both of them should be display flex with the direction of column flex items flex align items flex start and the gap of 1 rem why i have made the flex direction column because if i go here here you can see this text and this text are in the column direction and similarly this span and this span are also in the column direction after that i want the first block should have a little bit less width in compare with the second block so therefore here i am saying the first child should have flex one while the second child should have the flex of 1.6 let's save this and see in the browser here we have successfully made our blue growth sport section now let's make this complete what we do section responsive for the small screen so i am inspecting 
and if I am going down, so on small screens, I want these two blocks should be the blue advance in the blue seed blocks. These two blocks should be in the column direction. So here after this, I'm going to write a media query for the 990 pixel of the screen width. And here I would say on this, make the WWD blocks at the flex direction column. And then for the even smaller than 999 pixels, means the 768 pixels, I want the WWD sport should also become the flex direction column. And then there is a final media query that is for the devices even smaller than 768 pixels, like 576. On these devices, I want the features should also be in the flex direction of column and there should be no displacement of any feature like we have specified the margin top of 2rem and 3rem for the different features i want on the small screens there should be no margin top for any feature therefore i have set 0rem and made it as important so let's save this and now see in the browser if i go on small screen so here you can see our complete section is responsive for all kind of screens now so it's time to move towards the animation of this section let's close this css part and start our animation from the head section so again in the head section with the tag title and the description and we're going to use these class names again and again so that animation would also be repeating all over the website so instead of making the specific animations for this section i would make some global animations as we did with the container variants so now i'm going to make some more variants for each type of text so let's start from the tag variant so here i'm pasting the variant from the tag i'm saying the off screen should have the opacity 0 y 10 pixels and then when it comes to screen make the opacity 1 y 0 and the type of transition is spring with the duration of 2 seconds on the similar basis i'm gonna paste two more variants the first variant is the title variant. Again, this is a very simple type of transition. And then this is the description variant. You can just copy and paste these variants from this video. Let's save this and now go to our GSX. And for this tag, first of all, import the motion. So I would say import motion from framer motion. And then inside this WWD head, I'm targeting all of these pans by holding the alt button and making the cursor in front of each span tag and making motion dot span. Then let's make the more props of animations for each of these pans. So first of all, I would say initially the variant should be off screen and then while in view. So here can say while in view, the variant should be on screen. And then for each type of span, we have to specify different variants. So for the tag variant here, I would say variants gonna be equal to tag variants. And for this title here, I, here I'm saying variants is equal to the title variants. And similarly for this span, the description one here, I would say the variants are equal to the description variants. Let's format the code and see it properly. Here I have specified the same initial while in view and the tag variant, similar kind of stuff for the title and then for the description. Let's save this and in the browser, okay. Let's make this section as the use client. So on the top, simply write use client. Let's save this. And now in the browser, if I refresh my page, here you can see the heading of our section it is appearing in very smoothly with the animations. Similarly, I'm going to apply animations on these texts very quickly. So let's go to our code and here I have the blocks and inside this first block here, I can make this span as motion dot span code. Here you can see this is the variant initial while in view and class name. Then this is the second span. So again, make it motion dot span. Let me repeat the same thing for the second block heading as well. So this is the second block. Let's see in the browser now. If I refresh, 
Here you can see these headings are also appearing smoothly. The next thing we have to make the animations for these features block. If I go to the deployed version here, you can see there is a little bit delay between the appearing of these features. So let's see how we can do this. I'm going to use our container variant that we made at the start of our tutorial. This container variant, which is accepting the prop of delay. So now we're going to play with this delay prop. Okay, let's go to our first WWD block and here we are making the block feature. Let's make this div as the motion.div. Specify the common variants, the initial off screen and while in view on screen format the code. And now we have to specify the variants. So for the variants, I am saying use the container variants function and to give the dynamic delay to each of them, I would say i plus 1 which is the index number multiply by 0 0.1 so that when it is a first feature then the delay would be 0 0.1 when it's the second feature then the delay would be 0 0.2 seconds because the index starts from the 0 therefore i have written plus 1 so similarly i am just copying this and for the second block where we are iterating i think okay so actually i made on the second block here is our first one so motion.div just paste it here save this and see in the browser now here you can see when i am scrolling down they are appearing sequentially there is a little bit difference of the delay and animation is working exactly as we want let me make the animation very quickly for this blue growth sport as well so on the very bottom here I have this one motion.div paste this format the code save this and here now this last section is also animating so finally let's move towards our next section if I see on the deployed version here the next section is our difference which is again containing the three features and some data inside them and the background color of our website is also changing when we are scrolling towards this our difference tag so it's a very beautiful effect let's see how we can do this so let's close what we do dot jsx and here inside the page dot js we have to make a new component with the name of our difference so i'm just calling it as our diff now let's make a relative folder inside the component. So inside the components, I'm going to make a new folder with the name of our diff and inside this one, make the our diff dot JSX and similarly the CSS. Okay. Let's open the CSS side by side and inside the JSX RAFCE. Let's save this import its relative CSS. So our diff dot CSS like this. And here on the top as the first thing, I'm going to say it as div dot od wrapper means our difference wrapper. So like this and here inside this, I am saying our difference component or you can say it as section. Let's save this and inside it's JSX here. I am saying od wrapper and for now I'm just giving it a height. So for the height, I'm going to say 100 VH means the 100% of our view height. Let's give the width as well. So for the width, I'm going to save width as 100% of our view width. Let's save this inside the page.js. After import it by pressing control plus space and here is the suggestion. Just accept it and it is imported on the top. Let's save this and see in the browser. Yeah, so here is our new component and it is taking the 100% of our view height. Now, if I go to our developed version, here you can see when this section is coming into the viewport then the background color of our complete website is changing very smoothly it is giving a very nice effect on scrolling to this section so first we're gonna try to complete this functionality and then we would see how can we make this inner content okay so this is our version here inside the code first of all uh, i'm gonna import the framer motion on the top so on the top right import motion from framer motion like this one and also i'm gonna use a hook from framer motion the name of that hook is use animation so just import it on the top as well and here say const controls are equal to use animation like this and then for this most parent div which is having the class name of app here simply give it as motion.div by the way as we are using framer motion so i'm gonna make our page.js as use client like this let's save this okay now 
around this our different section here i'm gonna make a wrapper for this one so first of all make a simple div around this one like this now let's make a motion dot div and because the scrolling of this section gonna affect the styling of our application therefore i'm gonna assign the controls to our app so here i'm saying animate equal to the controls that we have extracted from the use animation okay now for this wrapper around our section here i'm gonna use a prop which is on viewport enter and on viewport enter i'm gonna say make an animation with this control so controls dot start the animation and in the animation i'm gonna change the background color so here selecting the background color and using our variable so write variable and then here i'm gonna use the secondary color like this one and similarly there is an other prop that i'm going to use which is on viewport leave so on viewport leave i'm going to simply say controls dot start and in this animation simply change the background color again to the white so as simple as this let's format the code and the last thing that we have to define is the amount of content that should be in the view to change the background color so let me explain it again first of all make the viewport as amount gonna equal to 0 0.4 so this prop is saying when this section is 40 percent in the viewport then start these animations okay now let's save this and see in the browser here you can see the background color is blue now because the section is more than 40 percent in the view let me scroll up the background color is changed to white and when this section is coming into the view the background color is changing very smoothly let's move forward and try to make the inner content as we have here switch to our our difference dot gsx file and here again repeat the same steps first of all make a container inside the container make the our difference container like this okay the first thing we have to make the head of our section so od head and in the od head again i'm gonna make the three spans so let's format the code and give the class names so here i'm writing class name okay the first span having the name of tag the second span is title and the third span is simply text so in the tag yes you are predicting right that the name should be our difference and then in the second i'm going to just copy and paste a uh, text like this and similarly for the third one i'm again copying and paste some text let's save this and see in the browser okay here we have our title and this is the text and we should also be having our tag yep here you can see this is our tag now let's go to his css part so in the css let's remove this pretext of od wrapper and here i'm gonna make it again so od wrapper and inside this one give a padding top of 15 rem now let's move to our container so here od container and inside this container display flex flex direction of column and the gap of 2 rem so here you can see this section is mainly containing the two things so what are these things this is the head section and this one is the detail of this section and these two are in the column direction therefore i have specified as display flex and direction column and the gap between both of them is the two rem so let me close this and go to our code again after the container i'm going to target the head of our section and in the head again display flex flex direction of column with the gap of two rem and the align item center let's save and see in the browser now yeah so here we have the title and the text in the column direction now for this specific section i want to change the color of our tag so here i'm going to say inside the head we have a tag for that one make the color as white and similar kind of thing i also want to do with the text so again i'm going to say in the head we also have the text again for that one make the color as white let's save this and see yeah so our tag is now in the white color and similarly text is also in the white color i also want to do some more styling for this text so first thing that i want i want the text line center so that whole 
so that whole text should be in the center and the maximum width that it should have is the 65 percent of the total width let's save this and yeah now it is in the exact format that we want let's move to the next section which is making these three containers let me zoom out a little bit and this is our head so i am minimizing our head and here make a comment of head after this here i am gonna make the features of our section okay so here i'm saying od features this is the parent container of the features and here i'm gonna use an array so the array having the name of our difference features so let's go to its definition here you can see in the data dot js that i have provided with the starter pack we have an array of objects each object is basically containing three things the icon path the title and the description and this is exactly what we want from each feature okay so let me map through these features here i'm gonna say map and in the map through each feature along with its index let's return the div so inside the div first of all we're gonna have an image so i'm gonna use the next image component and the src is gonna be feature dot src similarly the alt is again just a feature okay i also giving it a key so that react should not raise a warning and then the width of this image is gonna be 128 pixels and i think the height should also be 128 pixels and then i'm gonna have the two spans inside each feature so the first feature so inside the first span we have the feature dot title and in the second span we have the feature dot description like this uh, let's format the let's save this and see in the browser so yeah here we have i think the path is not working for these images again i made the same mistake instead of str here should be icon let's save this and now see in the browser yes so we have all the raw data here now we have to style it properly okay first of all i want to give it a class name so the class name of each feature is gonna be od feature let's save this go to our css od features first of all make them display flex with the gap of two rm so that they all should be in the row direction and then i am saying for each feature make the flex as one so that each feature would take the equal width on the screen and the background color gonna be white let's save this and see here yeah this is exactly what we want uh i think if i give a padding bottom of 15 maybe 10 rem just for now just while we are developing this feature yeah so that we can clearly see our containers but maybe the padding is disturbing the layout so instead of padding if i give the margin bottom like this let's save this and see here yeah it's working fine okay let's give some border radius to each of these containers and also the paddings and other required styling so do it quickly here first of all give some box shadow so i'm again gonna use my variable of shadow that we have declared in the globals.css display flex flex direction of column gap of one rem align item center and padding of two rem i think i forgot to give the border radius so for the border radius just give simply as one rem and see in the browser yep okay so these are having the pretty much required shape let's go to our code and inside the gsx for this first pen i'm gonna give it a class name of title and then for this description i'm going to give it a class name of text let's save this i think the title is looking too big for this section so what i can do instead of primary title here i can give it as a secondary title and yeah now it's looking fine i think this text should also have the center direction so in the css part here i would say inside the od feature we have a text so for their text make the text line as center and yep so this is our version and this is the deployed version they both are pretty much same 
let's remove the margin bottom that we give just for the testing so i am removing this margin bottom of 10 rem in this section again for the animation we're going to use the same strategy that we have used in the previous section so i'm gonna do it very quickly or maybe i would fast forward the video just to save time but you can see by pausing the video because we have already done this step so so first of all for this tag here i am making it as motion dot span and similarly for the title one again i'm gonna make this as the motion dot type motion dot span again and similarly for the text one so this one is the text format the code so you can see it properly now we have to import these tag variants the title variants and these description variants all from our animation.js that we have declared here save the code and see in the browser yep the animation is working fine the next step we have to apply the animations on these three containers so here on this section where we are iterating on our array uh, for this div i'm gonna make it as motion dot div like this and here passing some props so let's copy this and just paste it here format the code so what i have passed first of all i have made the variants again i have used the same strategy to have a difference between the delays of each container and then the initial variant while in view variant and the class name let's format this okay i think there is an error because we have not imported the container variants let's save this and again try if i scroll down to that section yep they are appearing in smoothly and there is a little bit of delay between the appearing animation of each container let's try to see the responsive view of this section and if there is any kind of misalignment then it would be very easy because we just have to make the flex direction as column in this section yes here we can see there is a little bit of misalignment on the small screens because they are sticking to the row direction and we have to change this so inside the code here we have the css with the flex direction of column and then i'm gonna say actually i'm gonna write an other media query the width as 80 percent of the total screen width and margin as auto let's save this and see in the browser again here you can see it is behaving well on the large screens and as we are moving on the small screens it is changing its direction to the column direction and maintaining its view very beautifully so our this section is now completed we can close this responsive view and now we can move to the next section which is this one how it works let's close this css file again go to the components folder and inside the components folder let's make how it works and in this one make how it works dot gsx and similarly make a css here so simply write how it works dot css okay now inside the gsx import the relative css from the relative folder dot css like this and inside the page dot js after this here just simply make this section like how it works are to import it let's save this and see in the browser okay so yep here we are having this text of how it works again in this section make the div hit means how it works wrapper then the div dot container and div dot hit container like this then again the first thing we should have in this is the head so for the head hit head and inside the head i'm gonna make the two spans so for the first span just simply write how it works and just make the class name as the tag that we are giving from the start of our tutorial and in the second i'm gonna paste the title of this section so the title is something like this let me format the code 
I, I think I have pasted it in the wrong place. And for the second span, give the class name as title. Let's save this and see. Yep, here we have this one, and I think we should be having the tag somewhere. Let's open its CSS side by side and write the wrapper. I, I think I have made a mistake. Instead of HIT, it should be HIW, means how it works. It has three words how it and works so therefore i am saying hiw instead of hit by the way it's just up to you you can give anything you want okay now the first thing is hiw wrapper for this one first of all i'm giving a padding tap top of 13 rem and then we have our container for this one display flex flex direction column and the gap of 2 rem then inside the head again it's gonna be display flex so with the flex direction of column the gap of 2 rem align item center the maximum width should be 35 rem with the margin auto let me format the code remove this extra line from here and see in the browser yeah so here we are the head is now in the correct format still we are not able to see the tag because the upper section is still in the viewport therefore the background color is blue and the font color of this tag is also blue but uh, when our section would be ready so that we can scroll properly to this section and then we will be able to see the tag also okay let's move forward so here our head would be closed and after the head now we have the features of this section so HIW features, I'm having an array inside the data.js, so I'm simply importing that array. Let's return our div and inside this div, we're going to make the two sides, the left side. Uh, for the left side, simply say it as detail side. And then after left side, we have the right side as well. By the way, we should give a key so class name gonna be hiw feature and then the key is i okay so in the right side simply the icon i think if i go to the deployed version here you can see we have the two sides of each feature this left side is containing the detail and this right side is only containing the icon and this structure is same in all of these three containers so first let's complete the content and then we would see the styling okay so in the left side make the three spans again and then in the right side where we should have the icon again i'm gonna use the image so image from the next image and hit the save button so if i go to this one here we have all the content now the only thing remaining is that we have to style these features okay so let's switch our gears to the css side and here i should complete the alt so on the alt i'm simply saying it as feature let's target the parent features so here i'm going to say hiw features and this div is actually this one sorry yeah this one and here i'm going to make it display flex flex direction of column of course with the gap of two rem and align item center then target the individual feature so again the maximum width is 38 rem of each of the feature then display flex and item center the background color gonna be our variable which is the light bg and then the border radius is 2 rem then the padding so padding i'm giving 0.5 rem from top and bottom and 1 rem from left and right and let me just save this and see in the browser yeah yeah so here at least now we are having the proper body radius the background color and the width of each feature working fine 
for more i would say the normal width should be the maximum content why i made this translate property let me save and let me explain you here you can see we want this detail to be outside of the parent feature container means the hiw feature is having the background color of this gray and we want detail to come outside of this section similar stuff we have in our deployed version so to make this therefore i have specified as the translate minus 18% now let's make the font size of this numbering a little bit small. So here again, I will say inside the HIW feature, we have the detail and inside the detail target the first child and make the font weight as bold and the font size as 1.1 REM. Yeah, so it is looking correct now. The next thing we want is that this image should also be going outside of the parent container. If we see in the deployed way here, you can see these images are also going outside of the parent section, similarly as the details are doing. So to make this, I would go to the GSX. Okay, here in the GSX where we have specified the image, let me format it. And here I would specify a style prop and the style I'm saying translate 50% zero RM, similar stuff as we did in the detail, but the translate amount is different according to the image size. So let's save this and see. Yeah, now the images are, are also behaving as we expecting. Now the next thing that we have to do, we have to move the first and third section a little bit towards the left side and this second section towards the right side. So for doing this, I would take the help of CSS and inside the CSS target the HIW feature. And here I would say nth of type means the second type of HIW feature. Ultimately the second feature make the margin left of 10 REM. Let's save. And here you can see the second feature has moved towards the right side. And then similarly, I would say HI feature, the nth type of, not the nth child, but the nth of type one. And similarly, the nth of type three. So I'm just copying and pasting it. And here, write the three. Make the margin right of five REM. Let's save. And here we are. Now we are having the exact alignment as we have on the deployed version. Let's see how we can make it responsive and it would be a little bit tricky to make it responsive because of this disalignment. So if we are going to small screens here, you can see they are not behaving well. The content is getting outside of the screen and it's not giving the best results. So how we can fix this again, go to our CSS and on the very bottom here, I am targeting the screen size as the maximum width of 80% of total container and then the HI feature and of type 2 make the margin left of 0 REM and similarly for the first and third one remove the margin right like this one if I go to a screen size, which is smaller than 1280 pixels, like 1100 pixels almost, the disalignment means the margin left and margin right are removed, but still the content is cutting outside of the screen. So to fix that issue, here I would do a very simple thing. I am just simply saying the detail should be translated to zero and similarly the image. Now if we see in the browser, everything is in the view. Now, if we go to the even small screens, again, the problem is this alignment is not correct for the small screens because the image is still not behaving well. So for the extra small screens here on the very bottom, I'm going to target the screen sizes, which are smaller than 576 pixels. And for that one, I'm targeting the HIW feature and change the flex direction to column reverse. So that image would be on the top and detail would be on the bottom side. Here you can see.
So now if I switch to big screen and then go to the smaller screens relatively, this is behaving well on all kind of sizes. Again, I would add the I would add the animations very quickly for this head section because we have already done this step a lot of time. So here I have the head inside the head we have two spans. So I'm just simply pasting this with the animations and adding the variants from the animation.js. I have just specified the tag variants for the tag and the variants of off screen and on screen and similar stuff for the title. Let's save this. Okay, again, there is a problem. I think I have messed up something. Let me see what I did. Yeah, so by mistake here, I have made the two times head and let me import the motion as well on the top. So import motion from framer motion. Now things should work fine. Yep, this section is working fine. Let's try to animate these features. So now let's go to the features section and for each feature make it as motion.div and here I'm going to specify some props for each of the feature. Let me just copy and paste it here like this. So what I did, I have specified a feature variance that we still have to make and then the initial variant off screen while in view on screen and these two props are previously written. So here on the top, I would make the feature variants. And for these variants, I'm pasting very simple properties here for the off screen. I'm saying on the off screen, the scale of each section should be 0 0.5 means the 50% of its in means the 50% of its actual size. And when this element comes into the view, then makes the size 100% of its actual size. And then the transition type should be the spring with the duration of 1.5 seconds. So this is very simple stuff. And I think it should also work fine on the browser. Here you can see. Now the next thing we have to animate these details. As on the deployed version, if I scroll, here you can see. The details are also giving an other kind of animation, which is coming from the left side. So to do this inside the GSX for the detail, again, make the motion.div. And here I'm pasting some props. Initially, I'm saying the opacity should be zero and on the X axis, translate it 100 pixels towards the left. Minus means towards the left side. And then when it comes into the view, make the opacity again 100% means the one that translate as zero and the transition type is in with the delay of 0 0.7 seconds. Let's save it. And here we go. If I'm scrolling to this section, because on the details we have specified a delay of 1.7 seconds, therefore first it is waiting for the popping of effect of the parent section and then after the 1.7 seconds it is performing the animation of sliding from the left side. So this section is completed. Now let's go to the deployed version and see what we have on next. So on next we have this section who we invest in and it's a very simple section. Again the background color of website is changing. Similar stuff that we done on the our difference section. Thus the just the background color of the website is now a different color. And then again, we just have to make this as display flex with the direction of column. And on the right side, we simply have to put an image. Let's close the CSS file. And I'm also closing all the extra files here. Go to the components folder and here gonna make a new folder with the name of who we invest. And in this folder, make a file with the name of who we invest dot gsx and similarly it's css i will be making this component really fast because a lot of stuff is just repeating in this section so the gsx rafce and then simply import it css from the relative folder who we invest dot css like this okay so as we did before first of all we have to make its wrapper wwi wrapper and then the container and then the container of the relative section so wwi container and in this section i'm simply saying wwi 
okay now go to our page dot js which is our home page so in the page dot js i am simply copying our motion dot div that we did for the our different section and i am enclosing the section of who we invest so just paste it like this and after this enclose our motion dot div let's format the code so basically i have enclosed this how we invest section with this motion dot div and we only have to change the background color from secondary to primary color this time let's save this and see in the browser so if i am scrolling down to this section of who we invest in here you can see the background color is changing to blue and on going upper it is changing to white so that's working fine let's try to make the inner content for this section so in this wwi container i'm gonna make the two sides as required by the design the first side is left side so in the left side i'm simply saying it a class name of wwi left and first thing that we're gonna have is the head of this section so inside the head again i'm gonna have the two span so span multiply by two the first span is having the class name of tag let me format the code inside the first tag i am just copying and pasting this who we invest in text and similarly for the second span i am just copying the content for that one and here i have written digital business then there is a line break and on the next line we are saying with early transaction again we have to give a class name here so i am giving a class name of title for this one let's save it and see in the browser yeah here we have the tag and this is the title the next thing we have to make we have to define all the features detail as we have in the developed version here you can see we have these features detail so again i have made an array in the data.js so we're gonna simply iterate over that array so this is the head and this is the features of this section and for the feature simply say wwi features inside the features I have an array of who we invest from data.js and I'm simply mapping over that array. So for each feature along with its index, what we have to return, we have to return a div. And first of all, this div gonna have a class name of WWI feature and then the key is I. Now in this feature again, we're gonna have the two spans. So for the first span, I'm saying feature.title and similarly for the second span i have to say the feature dot description so feature dot this like this one now give the proper class names for both of these spans so class names first span gonna have the class name of description and second one gonna have the class name of text let me format the code let's save it okay so our left side is now completed let me go to the right side so here i'm saying right side and writing div dot wwi right side so in the right side we simply gonna have an image and for the image i am giving the source of persons dot png that we have in the public folder and the alt value of persons let's save it and see in the browser if all of these things are imported yep here we have all of the details of features and here is the image imported successfully now we have to play with the css so in the CSS side, first of all, I am removing this pretext of WWI wrapper and on the first, I am going to target the container, which is this one. So for targeting this container, here I am saying inside the WWI wrapper, we have a container for that one, make the padding top of 13 REM. Now inside the WWI container, make the display flex justify content space between because here, if I have a look at the deployed version, you know this the left side is on the extreme left side and the right side is on the extreme right side therefore i am saying justify content space between and the line item centers and of course by default display flex has the flex direction of row so let's save it and see in the browser here you can see let's give the equal width to the left and right side so for giving the equal width i am targeting the direct div inside the wwi container and for each of them make the flex one so that each of them would have the width of 50 percent then for the left side make the display flex 
and yes in the left side as we have the details in the column direction therefore i am saying flex direction column and the gap is 2rm so the gap between the features and the head would be 2rm if i save this and here you can see this is the gap which is 2rm between this head and these details now first let's target the head so here i am saying inside wwi left we have the head for that one make again the flex Direction column gap 1 rem and align items flex start because we want heading to be started from the left side instead of from the center. So if I save it, so here it is starting from the left side, but still the title is starting from the center. It's not the flex, but it's the text align which is set as the center. So we have to change this. So for changing this, I am saying inside the left we have the head, and inside the head we have the title. For that one, make the text align as left. And also, I'm going to say the color as white. So if I save it, here you can see now everything in the head is in the perfect alignment. Now let's finally move to these features section so for these features section i am simply targeting the features again flex column and the gap of 2 rem now for each feature make the flex column and the gap of 0.5 rem between its title and its description so save it and here we have now we have to change the colors and also if the font size is required we would also change so first of all give the maximum width of 28 rem to each feature then we have the description inside each feature change the font color to fourth color and then we have the text again change the color to white if i save this here we are having very beautiful colors applied to these details now on moving ahead i am saying text align justify so that text would be justified on the left and right side and it would give a nice alignment to the text and then on the right side simply make it display flex item center content center so that the image would be in the center of right side for the image make the width as 100 percent of the right side let's save it and here we have the section is completed as simple as it is now if i try to inspect it for the responsive view the only thing we have to do for the responsive view we have to change the flex direction of the most parent div so here I'm targeting the media device of maximum width 990 pixels and making the WWI container direction as column with the padding of 2 RM. Save it and now try to see here. Here we have very beautiful alignment, but there is a problem with the gap between them. We can actually fix this gap just by giving the margin top towards this right side where we have the image. So to fix this here, I'm targeting the right side and giving it a line items, a line self center and the margin top of 2RM. And then for the image, I'm saying on this small device, have the maximum width of 20RM only. Save this and yep. Now it's looking perfect on all kind of devices. The alignment is also good. Now let's quickly move towards the animation of this section again the animation would be real quick in the tutorial because we are just repeating the same steps again and again and you are seeing how beautifully our website is completing let's go to this head section and instead of just simply writing these spans here i am pasting the motion dot span let me import the motion first so import motion from framer motion and what i actually did here you can see for this tag i have again just specified the tag variants with the initial off screen on screen similar stuff for the title let me import the title variants as well and then we have to imply kind of animations on these features again i am just gonna copy and paste the logic here like this and change this to motion.div okay so what i did i have specified the container variants let me fix this here okay let's format the code so this is the container variance and this time i have multiplied them 0 0.05 seconds so that the first variant would have the delay of 0 0.05 and then similarly it's gonna multiply by its index number so if i save this and try to see in the browser here you can see the beautiful transitions applied all over this section Similar kind of transition we also have to apply on the image. So it's also very simple for the image. I am just pasting some motion dot image here with the container variance 0.5 seconds means the delay would be half second. 
save this and here we are the animations and the responsive both of the things are completed for this section now let's see in the deployed version what we have on next so on next we have this testimonial sections and it's a very cool section it's gonna behave well on all kind of devices and this very nice scrolling effect that the center slide is popping up and there is a box shadow on the focus slide and then we finally have the footer so let's try to make this testimonial sections first let's go to our components folder and make a new component of the testimonials so inside the components testimonials and inside this again the two files the first one is for the gsx and the second one is for the css so this one is gsx and in the gsx rafce again and i'm importing its relative css so import from the relative folder testimonials.css and then inside the page.js after this section of our motion.dev where we have made this folder of who we invest just minimize this and below this i am targeting the testimonials component like this let's save this and close this extra file let's go to our browser and see the results we refresh the page so here we having very small text of testimonials you can see right here okay let's move ahead so here inside is CSS. Let me close this CSS and open the relative CSS on the right side. Okay. So the first thing that we have to make is again the wrapper and then the container and then the T container means the testimonials container. And the first thing that we have to make is the head as we are doing. And inside this one again, I'm going to make the two spans the first span is having the class name of the tag so let me make the class names as well here the first span has the tag and the second one is title let me quickly make the text inside them so this is the testimonials and the second one is access capital that complements traditional funding options just some random text and if we see the developed version so here we also have this description as well so for making this description here on the bottom i would also make a span with the class name of description in which we can simply write the same text let me just copy and paste it here okay when we have completed this t head then after this t head we have to make the slider so for finally making the slider here we can make a component with the name of slick slider and actually what we can do we can move it out of our t container so that here the alignment would be something like this if i minimize t container this is my t container and outside of this means inside the container we have our slick slider let's go to the components folder again and inside the testimonials in the same folder i'm making a new file with the name of slick slider dot gsx here again rafce let's save it and here are to import this component by control plus space and see in the browser if it is imported or not yeah so this is the tag this is the title and description and here we have the slick slider now first let's style the current content and then we would move ahead to making the functionality of slider so here we are in our testimonials.css and we would use the same file for targeting this slick slider.jsx and this testimonials.jsx. So first thing I am targeting the container inside the testimonials wrapper and giving it a padding top of 13 rem so that it would have the distance from the upper section. And then I am making the T container as the display flex with the direction column and the gap of 2 rem with the line item center because we want the head and the slider in the column direction with the gap between them as a 2 rem. So let's see the browser here we are next i'm going to target the head of our testimonials and giving it again the display flex and yes we will be making it the direction of column the gap between the tag title and description is one rem and the items in center with the maximum width of the title is 50 rem let's save this and see here here we have our title in the perfect alignment 
now we can finally move towards our slick slider section so before going to the slider section we have to import the cdns of our slick slider so in the new tab i would write react slick slider and this is the first link just click here and if we go to this docs in the docs we have these two links on the very top of this page simply copy these links uh, but before copying this let's go to our layout.js so here inside our app router we have this layout.js simply open this and just above our body element let me minimize it a little bit yeah so just above our body element here make a head and inside this head we're gonna paste those two links so i'm simply copying them like this and pasting them right here let me format the code so here you can see it more clearly i have just made a head tag and then i have pasted these two links let's save it and close our layout.js now we can work our slick slider in the return statement return this pretext and here make a new div inside the new div i am targeting our slider so just write it as slider and it would be imported from the react slick here you can see on the top it is saying import slider from the react slick so this is a pre-built component that is coming from the library of react slick we don't have to give too much code inside this components we just have to pass the settings as the props okay so inside this slider now we have to make the slides if i go to my data.js file okay and if i go to its bottom side here you can see i have made a testimonials data array and this is an array of object again each object is containing the comment of a person the name of a person and the profession of a person so let me visit the pre-deployed version here you can see each comment is having the comment the name and the profession of a person so these things are satisfied in our data file so we're going to use the same array in our slider let's go to our slick slider.gsx and here to iterate over the array i am importing the testimonials data and then saying map and each comment with its index number we have to return our div which is having the key as i and the class name of comment so let me make the class name as comment like this inside the comments i am mainly going to make the two sections the upper side of the comment and the lower side so in the upper side i am giving it a class name of c content so what is actually the upper side if i go to deployed version in the upper side we have this we have this apostrophe sign and this comment and in the lower side we have this icon which is having the first letter of the name and the name and profession so let's complete this upper side which is having the class name of c content and in this first of all import the next image component and give it a source so inside our public folder i have an svg with the name of apos.svg the class name is gonna be apos slider and then i am giving it an alt name of apos with the width of 40 pixels and the height of 30 pixels let's format the code and just review this component again so inside the c component so inside the c content we have made an image which is having the width of 40 pixel and the height of 30 pixels and then finally we have to target the comment so just write comment dot comment like this let's save it and see in the browser what we have as a result so in the browser here you can see we have a very basic version of slider without any kind of styling but at least it's working we can style it on later go to our code again and after this upper section i have to make the lower section so i am saying lower side and the lower side is having the class name of comment info so inside the comment if for the first thing is avatar so this is not the actual avatar just the first name just the first letter of the name so here write comment name and then the first letter of the name after this i am making a new div which is having the information related to the person inside this one again make the two spans and the first span is gonna have the name of person so 
comment dot name and inside the second span we're gonna have the profession so comment dot profession let's save this and now if i see in the browser yep there is no error we are having the first letter the name and the profession and also the upper side is working fine let's try to style this section so in the styling the first thing that comes for the slider is the settings of the slider so here i'm gonna destructure some props and sync them as settings now we have to make those settings so here i am making a constant with the name of settings for this slider i am saying the dots should be true means there would be the dots at the bottom of slider by clicking on the specific dots you can go to the specific slides and then i am saying the infinite as true so that the slider would have the infinite sliding the speed of slider should be 1000 you can also tweak the settings according to your project or if you are just following this tutorial then you can keep the same settings on the viewport there should be three slides and slides to scroll so slides to scroll should be one means on sliding the slider only one slide should be scrolled the initial slide should have the index zero means the zeroth index should be the initial slide and then this is a very important setting for the mobile view is the touch move should be true and the use css should also be true now we have to pass some props for the responsiveness of our slider means on the small screens i am saying on the breakpoint of 1024 pixels it should start showing the three slides per view and on the 1000 it should start the two slides per view and similarly on the small screens means on the screens that are smaller than 768 pixels show only one slide per view let's finally move towards our css part so here in the css we have to make some stylings according to the slider class name so there is a class name with the name of slick slider which is i am going the margin top of 5 rm then there is a slick track in which our slides would lie so i am giving it the padding of 4 rm from top and bottom and then for each slick slide i am saying it should have the padding of 20 pixels from left and right and then there are the dots at the bottom of our slider for them i am saying from bottom they should have the zero pixel distance let's save this and here we have now these are having the perfect padding and these dots that are working very fine let's go to our css again and here now i'm gonna target our comment which is our div that we have made here actually here this one so for this one make the display flex direction column border radius 20 pixels position relative box size and border box so that when we're gonna give the padding inside the comment it would not affect the layout of slider so here is the padding of 2 rem the gap of 3 rem between the contents let's save this and here we are we should also give some kind of box shadow as well but we would see those box shadows at last okay so for the content section means for the upper section i am giving it a height of 200 pixel flex item start direction column gap to rem and then we have the spans for the spans simply font size of one rem actually these spans are these one here we have the comment so i'm targeting this span okay after giving the line height of 1.5 rem now i'm targeting the lower part which is the info so for the info again flex item center at the gap of one rem okay next we have to make the avatar settings but let's save this and see in the browser yep looking fine and we can also slide these okay so i was noticing that that we must be having some kind of bug that only one slide is showing up in the viewport even on the large screen so when i saw the code then i found that we have made a typo here that it should be slides to show not the slider to show so now if i save this and see in the browser you can see now it's properly showing the three slides per view okay let's move towards our css again inside the avatar give it a background color which is more like a light purple color and the font color as white let's save this and see here yeah 
now we have to give some padding and border radius to this so giving it a font size of 1.1 rem with the border radius 100 percent means the rounded and then the display flex item center content center with the width of 3 rem and the height of 3 rem instead of giving the padding what i did i have simply given them the width and height so it will perform the same thing let's save this and see in the browser here we have this now let's go to this person div where we have the person name and its profession so for that one here i'm targeting the c person making it as display flex direction column with the gap of 0.5 rem then i'm targeting the first child means the name of the person and giving it a font weight of bold save this and see here here we have okay the last thing we have to do we have to fix this profession font so for that one i'm targeting the second child and giving it a font weight of bold with the color of this a kind of gray color with the font size of 0.8 rem save this and now see the browser if i go to the deployed version you can see it is almost same the only thing that is meaning that we should give the box shadow to a focus slide it means the center slide should have a box shadow so for doing this again i would take the help of our css and actually this kind of behavior is only possible on the large screens if i inspect our deployed version and go to the small screens here notice this thing that now the focus light is no more having the box shadow because of the small screen but on the large screens it is having this box shadow so of course we have to make a kind of media query for doing this and instead of targeting all the small devices i'm going to target a large device on which it's going to have this box shadow so in our css i am targeting the minimum width of 1280 pixels and then i am writing this long css selector i know at first sight it can be a kind of confusing but if we hover this class then it is saying that first we have a team or you can say an element with the class name of slick slide slick active and slick current so it's gonna be our first slide in the viewport but we don't want the first slide to have the box shadow so to target the next slide here i am saying plus and plus gonna target the next slide and i am saying in the next slide target the comment so for that comment give it a transition of all 100 ms ease out so that it would have a smooth effect while going in and out and it should be scaled up to 1.1 percent so it would be bigger than the other slides and transform it translate y minus 30 pixels so it would be having an effect of moving upward while coming into the view and finally giving a box shadow of our variable shadow save this and now if i see the browser this is our version okay here you can see it is when it is coming the view it is going a little bit upward and also scaling up and giving it a very smooth effect okay finally go to our deployed version and this is our last section where we have to make our footer the footer is gonna be very simple because we have already made this section of email box and then we are simply making this menu let's go to the vs code and in the vs code i have closed all the files and inside the components i am gonna make a new folder with the name of footer inside the footer let's make the gsx and the other one is css so footer.css let's go to our gsx part rafce and quickly import it in our page.js which is our home page actually we are only having one page so this is our default page and here i am calling the footer component by auto import here it is imported on the top let's save it and inside its gsf we're going to make it very quickly because it's a very simple command so the first thing is again we're gonna have the wrapper of our footer which is f wrapper then we're gonna have the container and then we are having the f container which is specific for the footer means the footer container okay if i go to the developed version here you can see the first thing is this one where it is saying get funded today so for making this i am simply making a span giving it a class name of title and here i am writing get funded today the next thing is we are having an email email box just below this span so i'm calling our pre-built component email box and it is auto imported on the top let's save this and if I, I go to our current version here i have this title and this email box is also rendering here okay 
if uh, again I have a look at the developed version the next thing we have this horizontal line and then we have this menu so first of all for that horizontal line after this email box here I am making HR and then I'm gonna make our footer menu so F menu and inside this footer menu I am simply making some menu items with the spans so if I format the code these are five spans each of which is a menu item means home what we do how it works so it's very simple and then after this menu we are again having a horizontal line below this menu so let's save this and if I go to this version yep, here I have these two lines then these our menus and then email box okay after this horizontal line I am again having a beautiful span so for this span I am giving a class name of text and here I am copying and pasting again some text made with love by Zen keeps code let's see in the browser and yep here at the end I have this line made with love by Zen keeps code now quickly do the CSS part of this so here we have footer.css and here the first thing that I'm gonna target is this container this container so for this container I am saying giving it a margin top of 5 rem padding top of 5 rem bottom of 2 rem so if I save this you can see now it's gonna have some height okay I think I forgot to import the CSS so let me import the CSS quickly so footer dot CSS like this now if I have a look in the browser I think I should refresh the page okay so this is not applied let's see what happened in the code so there is a wrapper there is a wrapper then I am targeting this container and yep here is a typo with the container spelling let me fix this and now if we see in the browser yep here it is having the padding top and the margin top okay the next thing is I'm gonna target this F wrapper so for this F wrapper I'm giving it a background color of blue which is our primary color if I save this and here we have this beautiful color then I'm targeting our footer container making it display flex of course we are gonna have the flex section column because if we have a look at the developed version all of these things means this title email box and these menus and horizontal lines are in the column direction so therefore here I have specified the direction column giving the gap of 2 rem and the align item center and let's have a look here yep it, it has already started giving us some kind of alignment and then I am targeting the title giving it a color of white save this and here we have this title okay the next thing is email box for the email box this time I am giving it a maximum width of 36 rm so it should not be expanded so much so now it should have a proper look yep okay the next thing is the horizontal line for the horizontal line I am giving it a border color so it would have that black color inside it and then giving it a width of 100% means it would take the total width of our footer if I save this and here we are okay yes of course our next things are the footer menu so for the footer menu flex specify content space between of course 100% width and the flex wrap as wrap so that on small devices uh, it should maintain its alignment and here we are now we have to target these spans of our menu so for them here I'm targeting the spans inside the menu giving them the color of white text transform uppercase font size 0.9 rem and the font weight of board and here we are if I refresh our website then it is also starting the animation of the email box which is a very smooth effect to see okay the next thing is to make it responsive for the small devices if I go to small device here you can see uh, it's not working well on the small device because of this F menu so what I'm going to do again inside our code here I'm targeting on the maximum width of 990 pixels make the F menu of flex direction column gap to rm and align item center so now if we have a look here we are how beautifully it's working yep this is exactly what we want so our footer is now also completed now there is one more thing that we have to do in this website if I go to our pre-built version let me yeah now if I go to this one here you can see try to focus on the header when I scroll down more than this hero section then this header appears okay and it sticks on the top however on the hero section it goes away and this is actually very common effect on a lot of website and it's very user friendly to navigate between the different sections of your website but 
currently it's not enabled in our website so how we can do this let's see in our code so again i'm closing this footer.css and this jsx and i'm gonna towards our navbar.jsx so here inside our navbar.jsx we have this navbar wrapper if i add one more class of sticky here okay and let's open the navbar.css as well so in the navbar.css just below this end wrapper i'm gonna make a class with the name of sticky so what this sticky is actually gonna do first of all it would make the position fixed and then it would apply a box shadow uh, on our header this is the value you can just copy and paste from this video then it would apply the background color as white to our complete navbar and then from top it is saying it should have the zero distance from the top so if i save this here i am repeating in the dot gsx i have added a class with the name of sticky and in the dot css i have added this code so now if i go to our website so this is the kind of look it is producing now that our header now sticks to the top of our website but the problem is no text is appearing inside of our header because our text is having the color white and our background is also white now so to fix this again i would go to our code and just blow this and container here i'm gonna make sticky and container means when, when our container is inside the sticky div then what to do then change the color to our variable and our variable is title color like this and give it a padding of one rem only this time okay so if i save this and go to code here you can see our website is now having a proper look but now again the problem is in the hero section it is not disappearing and now it is like having this constant look of white background but we want a behavior of this type when it's in the hero section it should change its color it should change its property of position fixed so how we can do this we have to do the framer motion so for the framer motion here on the very top of our navbar.jsx import these three things from the framer motion the first thing is motion then use motion value event and the third thing is use scroll now we have to play with the use state as well so on the top make a use state with the name of navbar styles means the nav style and by default it is having the empty string the next thing is we're gonna use the use scroll hook from the framer motion and we are destructuring the function of scroll wipe progress so how the scroll wipe progress is useful in this so here i'm gonna paste a function which is a very easy it's actually again a framer motion hook which is taking the three props the first prop is the amount of page scroll the second prop is the event and the third prop is the function uh, which is going to do something with the event result okay so scroll by progress give us the amount of page scroll as we are on the top of website the scroll by progress going to have the value of zero but if i scroll down now the value is increasing from zero to zero point one two three four five so it's in the points actually the total value range is from zero to one so it starts from zero and at the end of page it completes as one so scroll by progress is giving us that value here and then we are fetching that value in our use motion value event and we are saying if this value is changing means on the change event take the result and compare if the result amount is more than 0.2 percent means if the page has been scrolled more than 20 percent then make the navbar style as sticky otherwise remains as it is so here instead of using this sticky this time i'm gonna use our use state which is the nav style and of course we have to use the back ticks for using the javascript like this let me make it inside the curly braces sorry uh this should be here okay now we have the default header if i scroll down so this hero section is 20 percent of our website let me scroll more than 20 percent so 20 percent completes here and this is our header appearing okay so this is a very common effect on a lot of websites and i have simplified this process for you it's very easy to make this with the help of the framer motion
The next thing we have to see how we can connect our menu items to the different section of website so that when we click on a specific menu item then it should be scrolled down to the specific section. Actually what happened I completed the recording of the complete tutorial and then I then I remember that I forgot to make this section like uh, to make this connection section of menu items and the different parts of website so I came back after recording and then I am recording this feature so I hope I would adjust it in the recording but it's actually very simple to do the first thing you have to import the link from the react scroll at the top here and then here we have the different menu items so let's paste the uh, let's suppose the first menu item is this one the what we do so i'm gonna paste this link and let me close this as well and close our what we do section around this and here i am targeting our wwd wrapper which is actually what we do section if i go to our what we do dot gsx here you can see the top class name is the wwd wrapper so i'm targeting that class name and then here is the prop of spy true and to have a smooth scrolling effect make this prop of smooth equal to true if i save this and go to our website now if i click on what we do here it is our website is automatically scrolling similarly i'm gonna make the links for all of these menu items so uh, i'm gonna do this quickly you just pause this video and see how the code was written so here i have linked this page with how with how it works wrapper and then okay there is one more prop of offset equal to 100 what is the meaning of offset of sometimes you have to adjust the scrolling amount according to the height of the section therefore you can also play with these these are actually pixel values here i'm saying offset should be 100 pixels okay now if i save it uh, similar kind of stuff i have done with all kind of menu items now if i save it and go to a website here you can see this is working well on all kind of links now the next thing we have to do it same for the mobile version as well so this is our mobile version and right now you can see it's doing nothing on clicking any menu item so how can we do this for the mobile it's also very simple scroll down and here we have our mobile version so this is our first menu item here i am making again a link let me make this like this and here in close the section of uh what we do like this one so again this is to the target of w wrappers by true smooth to the extra thing is here i am saying on clicking any menu item close our menu because you know in the mobile version we have a sliding menu therefore i'm saying when you click on any menu item then close the menu because we want to see the section where it is scrolling so if I save this and go to the website, here if I click on what we do, here it's working. Similarly, I'm going to make the links for the rest of these three menu items. So here I have made like this. You can see it in detail again to HIW wrapper for this one to WWI wrapper for this one to T wrapper. And for all of them, I'm closing our menu. Okay, if I save this and say in the browser, here the styling is now distorted but the functionality is working so to fix the styling again inside the dot css here you know uh, in the responsive version we have targeted the span so inside the span if this time i've targeted the a uh, a means the anchor tag and see in the browser try to open the menu here it is again fixed so yeah that's it is and i think now this feature is also completed let's move towards the deployment of our website so the last thing is how we can deploy this website to Wordcell to easily share with our clients or anywhere you need this to showcase your skills. So let's go to our VS Code again and go to this directory. And what you can do, just right click on this app folder and click on this reveal in file explorer. Okay, so this kind of window would appear. The first thing you have to do, delete this dot kit from here. Okay, so I am deleting this. Control shift delete. So now it is removed again go to your code and go to the source control here try to initialize a new repository why i did that because i want to disconnect for, uh, you from the starter pack so you should have your own repository connections so just click on this initialize the repository and take all these changes by clicking on this plus sign and here i am making the comment as website done let's say just for example commit this 
then click here on the publish branch give it any name so let's say i am giving it as digital business youtube and i'm making it as private repository so publish to github private repository and it's gonna some seconds so let's wait for uploading of files okay so our branch is now published successfully means our repository is now uploaded to github the next thing we have to do here uh, i'm gonna use my account of Vercel. so let me go to my current uh, so in the correct browser and here i'm writing vercel.com and i have logged in in my vercel.com with our github credentials means i have connected my vercel with the github it's why you just have to log in with github okay so here add new add new project and then here i am having digital business youtube that is just uploaded so just click on the import and, and you have nothing so much to do here it has already detected that we have used the next year's framework and this is the name of our uh, project so just click on the deploy button simply the deployment started wait for some seconds while it is building our package and doing some necessary stuff so here we are our website is successfully deployed to internet just click on this preview and now it's gonna take you to your deployed website you know how easy it is to deploy your projects means next js react projects on the world cell and it's actually free yeah, so if i refresh you can see it's really fast and yep it's working fine now so i will share the link in the video description you can visit it as well so that's yeah that's it from this tutorial uh if that tutorial will help you in making your skills or in improving your skills then please support the channel subscribe the channel hit the like share and subscribe button and also you can support me on patreon if you want uh, actually the subscription ratio is a little bit low nowadays i know i'm not putting of tutorials it's just because of my schedule is not allowing me to do a lot of stuff a, a lot of things projects are going in parallel in my life but i would try my best to upload as much projects as i can so i hope you like this tutorial and uh, you would support me so thanks for watching till the end see you next time